But he's not intimidated at all. He's got very good stuff, and hopefully he can give the Red Sox a good start here this afternoon. The Red Sox certainly hope so. With more, here's Steve Lyons. You know, both of these teams have struggled in the American League East this year, and when you point to why, I think you have to point at the injury bug. Certainly with the Red Sox, you're talking about Big Poppy back in the lineup today, but he's had issues all season long. Those will continue to linger. Also, Xander Bogart with the bad hamstring, he's back in the lineup today. That is a good sign. Of course, Victorino and now Napoli on the DL with various issues. Victorino with the hamstring and Napoli with a bunch of different stuff. And when you look at the Rays, the same situation. The difference is they're starting to get their guys back. Jeremy Hellickson threw 40 pitches today in a simulated game. Matt Moore's going to be out for the year with that elbow issue, but Ben Zobris is coming back and Alex Cobb is already back. This team is very close to being that team that they have been in the past. All right, Steve, thanks very much. Well, David Ortiz back in the lineup for the Red Sox. A welcome sight as they try to turn things around. We're back with more from the drop right after this. Three-game series between the Rays and the Red Sox. Welcome back inside the broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo. Well, a very long night for the Red Sox and Rays in game two. It always hurts a little bit more when you lose a 15-inning game as the Red Sox did yesterday. And, of course, now the Red Sox have now lost nine straight games. They hand the baseball today to Brandon Workman. Really amazing that the Red Sox had used all five starters and no one else to this point. But with Felix Dubron going on the DL with a fatigued arm, it requires a call-up. And Brandon Workman gets the call-up. With more, here's L. Duncan. Thank you, Don. When that call was made, we asked John Farrell, why did you decide to go with Brandon Workman over Alan Webster? He said he thinks because Brandon Workman just has better command of his pitches, and based on his history, he knows he can handle the bigs. If you look at Workman's 5 2 ERA in Pawtucket, you might scratch your head, but Brandon says that is no indication of how he's pitching now, and he's our Geico quote of the day about how good he's feeling. I'm definitely excited. I'm excited to be back up here and, you know, to be in a starting role. That's what I was working towards, so I'm really excited. It took a little while to kind of get stretched back out again. I was a little sore after the first few, but I feel like I'm in a good place now and I'm, you know, in shape to throw, you know, multiple innings, you know, deeper pitch counts, all that sort of thing. Farrell did recognize that it is difficult to go from relief pitching back to a starting role, but he says there will be no pitch limitations on Workman, and he says that's necessary based on what's happened yesterday. They need him to go as long as he can. Yeah, well, he's got to go deep into this game for the Red Sox. Red Sox need a win badly. We're back at the top with the first pitch right after this.
Baseball and Nesson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, the new Buick Verano, Dunkin' Donuts, and by Toyota's website for deals by a Toyota.com. Beautiful weather at St. Pete Beach here in St. Petersburg, Florida. Climate controlled Tropicana Field on the inside as the Red Sox and Rays wrap up this three game series. The Red Sox looking to salvage the final game of the series and Boston trying to snap this nine game losing streak. Of course, uh, the Red Sox losing all six games on the homestand and dropping the first two games of this series. And uh, Jerry, really, you know, you come into this situation against uh, the Rays team and you hope to turn things around down here, but uh, a 15 inning game does not help anything or your bullpen for that matter. No, it does not. And, you know, they played hard for 15 innings and they had the uh, five run lead early in the ball game, which makes it more depressing the fact that they lost that ball game last night. And the way they lost it, you know, on an error, a ball thrown in the center field, just another ugly loss for the Red Sox, and it goes on and on and on. And, you know, as I said in the open, the only way you turn that around is to go pitch to pitch. You just got to come to the ballpark every day with a positive attitude that something good is going to happen to you today, and hope, hopefully that snowballs a little bit. And the Rays taking the field as led by their starting pitcher, Joe Kidd Odorizzi, taking the hill here today for Tampa Bay. Let's check out the visiting Red Sox starting nine. Brock Holt leads it off at third base with Xander Bogarts at shortstop batting second. Dustin Pedroia at second base in the three spot with David Ortiz, the DH. Mike Karp at first base with Daniel Naba in right field batting sixth. A.J. Brzezinski does the catching with Grady Sizemore in left field. And Jackie Bradley Jr. in center field bats ninth. On the mound today for the Rays is Jake Odorizzi. Comes in at 2 and 4 into today's 10th start of the year for him. 4.98 earned run average, 52 strikeouts and 23 walks. And opponents hitting at 274 against Odorizzi. May 20th against Oakland, his last outing took the loss, lasted four and two thirds innings, gave up three runs in that effort. Eight strikeouts and five walks for Odorizzi, listed as the number one prospect in the Rays organization. And the defense today for Tampa Bay, they have third in the American League with 26 errors in 50 games. Evan Longoria will be at third base. You know, Escobar, the shortstop. Logan Forsythe at second, and James Loney, the first baseman. Left to right, David D. Jesus, Brandon Geyer, and Will Myers, and Jose Molina doing the catching for Odorizzi. Yeah, the umpire crew, Angel Hernandez, has the play calling the balls and strikes with Adrian Johnson at first base to Sherwater is at second base. And the crew chief, Larry Van Over, the umpire at third. This game is available in Spanish. The SAP function is brought to you by the new Captain Morgan White Rum. When is Tade's, amigos? Well, Steve, as the Red Sox here starting to rack up the injuries, as you mentioned, they're starting to pile up here in a hurry and changing the Red Sox roster pretty quickly. Yeah, obviously they have to make some changes. The workman's up here today, and I, I think that they're going to have to make other changes after as. John Farrell said after they catch up, they have to worry about the fact that their bullpen is overused and overworked, and they may have to make more decisions out there after today's ballgame. Yeah, it appeared that uh, Alex Wilson was only going to be here a day or two until Workman was activated, and then he would go back. But now, Alex Wilson's a the guy they need in the pen. They do, and, and one big uh, note today, obviously, Mike Napoli put on a disabled list for the Boston Red Sox, which is more bad news for, for Boston. And Brock Holt standing in to lead it off here against Odorizzi. Holt has been leading off for the Red Sox last couple of days. And the ball game underway as the pitch misses up high. Guys, one of the things I noticed right away, a couple changes in the dugout. Pedroia has shaved maybe <laughs> to ward off this uh, losing streak, whereas Brock Holt, I don't think ever could grow a beard. Well, I, you know, you look at Pedroia, and I don't think I've... I can't remember the last time I saw him clean shaven. I saw him in the clubhouse today, and it was amazing. It almost doesn't look like Dustin Pedroia. Now, baseball players are very superstitious, and uh, you know, you you go a long time with this losing streak, and say, "Well, it's time to change something. I might as well shave." And Brock Holt leading it off here in the series against Tampa Bay, three for eleven so far. And as long as the game went yesterday, you can get into a slump in a game like that. So many at bats. And I kid, I think that's it. <laughs> It was unbelievable here last night watching that game. A couple guys did get into a slump almost. Sizemore was 0 for 6 in that ball game. Carp 0 for 5. David Ross 1 for 6. Well, that's a couple days worth of, of, of no hitting. 
And Brock Holt with 11 at bats in the series in the two games. A couple of good defensive plays from Holt in the series as well as he carves another one foul off to the left. Now the Red Sox today will see the uh, fastball, a slow curveball from Odorizzi, and a changeup. And he got into the habit of throwing the changeup a lot early in the game, and they tried to get him to be more consistent with it a little later in the game, not so many early in the ball game, but he's got a good one. And this one is grounded foul outside of third. And, and that was it right there. Here's another shave in Red Sox. Uh, Miller last night, well, he had shaved the bottom of the goatee prior to last night's uh, loss as it worked out. Now he is completely clean shaven. He looks like a totally different guy. He does. <laughs> I mean, those guys in this clubhouse I do not recognize. Exactly. He's one of them. Took, took 10 years off his life right there. Brock Holt backing out here. Good first at bat of the day for the Red Sox. And share your thoughts on the way that he has led off so far for the Red Sox. It appears that he's making pitchers work. And this is driven out to deep left center field. Guy on the run will get there. Shy of the warning track to pull it in. But today's twisted but true fact of the game. Red Sox have scored in only one of their last 31 innings played. Twisted tea hard iced tea is the refreshing hard iced tea that tastes like real iced tea. Be a little twisted. Of course, that was the five runs that they scored in the first inning yesterday that they had hoped would hold up. And by the fifth inning, the game was tied up. There was Bogarts who left yesterday's game with what was described as a hamstring cramp. And it's certainly good news that he was back in there today. It appeared yesterday not to look very good. I watched him this morning. He was out with the uh, strength and conditioning coach to train as he was going through a lot of agility drills. And uh, his name was already posted in the lineup uh, when I got to the ballpark. So uh, that was just precautionary to go out there to make sure everything was okay. So it probably was just a cramp last night. No pull, no strain. And that's good news. Fouled off to the right out of play. Alexander yesterday on the swing, grabbing the back of the leg as he struck out. And did not continue after that as Jonathan Herrera took over at shortstop the next inning defensively. He's uh, attended two in the dugout and stayed in the dugout the remainder of the game. Jerry, didn't that scare you a little bit when you heard that? Because I don't generally hear of a hamstring cramping up if something happens to it it's usually some type of strain I can't believe he's back in there now the thing about it is playing on this turf I think you get more cramps than you do playing on a regular field with grass and regular dirt and I think that uh, you know being on the uh, turf field I think maybe had something to do with that and Bogart strikes out first K of the day for Oda Rizzi two down yeah keeping the ball away that time from Bogarts and picking up the uh, the strike out on the pitch away. That's what they do to Xander. When they get ahead of him, they go away from him and try to make him hit the ball to the opposite field. Bogdan's with a pretty good swing on it, but no contact. Now two down for Dustin Pedroia, cleanly shaven as he stands in the box. 269, two homers and 14 runs driven in. In the series, 0 for 6. He has walked four times. But does not have a hit in the series. Steve, it sounds like there's a lot of things wrong with Mike Napoli, not just any one thing that has him on the DL. Yeah, he's got a couple different leg injuries. Of course, that finger has been a problem ever since he heard it. They want to relook at that. The boy grounding out the second and a 1 2 3 first. Broder is he? Brandon Workman's back in the big leagues. He'll be on the mound. When we come back.
Harper in the first. Rays are coming up. And today's Red Sox starting pitcher is presented by your New England Audi dealers. Experience the all new 2015 Audi A3 today. Numbers for Brandon Workman so far this year. Triple A Pawtucket. Seven starts, three and one with a 5.12 earned run average. A 268 opponent batting average. Not great numbers, especially looking at the earned run average, but very good for the Red Sox this season with the Red Sox three games six and a third four hits one run striking out seven and walking a batter. David DeJesus leading it off for the Rays and taking ball one as we talked about in the open dive this is the guy we kind of expected to be called up to the big leagues the Red Sox really like Workman they like what he did for him last year his presence his poise and his stuff. And it seems that was really the decision maker at that point because. Webster's had better numbers. This is down the right field line towards the pole, and it is going to be a foul ball to the right of the pole. Had the distance, but foul. Now De Jesus facing Workman for the first time. Got a fastball in, hooks it, but goes into foul territory. Certainly had the dip, the distance, but not the right direction. Interesting, guys. The perspective from down here. In the dugout, you could tell right off the bat that was going to be a foul ball just because of the angle we have down here. I think you're going to find in this building, Steve, this may be the loudest building in the league from a noise standpoint, not from the crowd or the fans, but from the uh, PA booth here and the scoreboard. I guess they got to do something to generate some excitement. 2 1 pitch is foul tipped, and it's 2 and 2. Working going up and away with the fastball last time gets a swing and foul tip into Pazinski's glove. He has this uh, first time he's played a position in this series. He's been the DH, but remains in the leadoff spot. Former center fielder of the Kansas City Royals on a regular basis. A swing and a miss. And a good start for Workman, able to strike out to Jesus. Let's check out the rest of the Rays lineup. David DeJesus in left, Evan Longoria at third base, bats second with Matt Joyce, the DH. Will Myers in right field, bats fourth with James Loney at first base, Brandon Geyer in center. Logan Forsythe at second base, bats seventh, Yanel Escobar at shortstop eighth, and Jose Molina does the catching, batting ninth. Well, Longoria in that familiar two spot where he's settled into a lot this year. You mentioned off the top the Rays starting to get healthy while the Red Sox are going in the other direction. Yeah, obviously Poppy's in the lineup here today, but he's still banged up. It's not like he's 100% healthy. He's just able to play. Napoli goes on the DL. That certainly hurts. Victorino on the DL. Xander Bogart's banged up. Tough to play that way. Tough to win games. Is getting Cobb back and so many others on their way back. Swing and a miss for Longoria and Workman with back to back strikeouts to begin the day. Now let's take a look at the Red Sox defense brought to you by Southwest Airlines. They were 11th in the league with 32 errors in 48 games. Brock Holt at third base, and the Bogots the shortstop, Dustin Pedroia at second, and Mike Cobb, the first baseman. Sizemore, Bradley Jr., and Navar in the outfield, and A.J. Pazinski doing the catching for Workman. Two down here in the first inning. Good start for Workman as Matt Joyce stands in. We said 274, three homers and 21 runs driven in. It's interesting. Red Sox do not go into the full shift right now with uh, Joyce. We've seen him going to the full shift. that happened last night, but uh, they certainly are playing him the pull and. Holt in close to the grass at third base. I think when you put a shift on like that, obviously the third baseman's going to lose a little range because he still does have to protect against a potential bunt, so that forces him in a little bit. Of course, Joyce tried to bunt in last night's ball game, and Holt threw him out. Now they do go to the full shift here with the count two and zero, oh with Bogarts coming to the right side of the infield. Three and oh. Mr. Joyce's outfield hits going to right, thus the shift here in the infield, and also playing him to pull in the outfield.
So he's swinging 3-0 and kind of changed his mind in the middle. That's not the kind of pitch you want to swing at 3-0. He's looking for something middle in. Instead, he gets a fastball away and tries to check the swing. Some guys can swing 3-0. Some guys can't. They just get over anxious. In there for strike two. Fastball in there. Full count. Yeah, Jerry, I think it's almost a cardinal sin. If you're in a 3-1 count or a 3-0 count, you, you're telling yourself you're going to look dead red middle in, and if you get a pitch, it's almost a cardinal sin to be late or take it. Chopped up over the glove of Workman, but right at Bogart. Ship works out, and Joyce is retired. Nice first inning for Brandon Workman. We'll check out the Scion poll when we come back. It's time for tonight's poll presented by the new Scion TC. The question is, what's the best way to speed up the game? Text Sox 1 if it's the batter can't step out of the box. Sox 2, you want to eliminate replay. Sox 3, to enforce time between pitches. Sox 4, for no coach visits to the mound. You can text your answer to 536-536. Remember that message and data rates may apply. Then you can go to nesson.com slash terms to get all the legal stuff. Don John Farrell says, open up the strike zone. Can you vote for more than one? Yeah, I, I, I got three, I got three there. of them on there. <laughs> three of them that they can change today that right would now. make me very happy. Right now. Batter can't step out. Yep. Enforced to be between pitches. Yep. And no coaches to the mound. I agree with that one, definitely. And I'm going to add to that. Not only no coaches, no players. I'm okay with video replay. Everything else I want changed. That's right. How about replay already being on that list? <laughs> they just got it. <laughs> Well, David Ortiz leading it off here. Welcome sight to have him back in the starting lineup today. Also bagged up. Ortiz, Carp, and Nava scheduled to bat here in the second inning. He's in the full shift on the right side. I was talking to Juan Nieves just about that yesterday about the you know, pitching coach for the mound. I mean, he makes many trips to the mound, obviously. And I said, well, come on. I said, nah, I've been involved in a lot of these. Nothing happens out there. He says, you're right. It's just a lot of time. It's just a waste of time. And the ground foul outside of first. He says, most of the time, the pitchers don't want you out there anyway. Well, your contention has always been all along that uh, your hitting coach could never come out and talk to you in the middle yeah. of the bat. If I put so. a ground ball, can I call my infield coach out to help me out? <laughs> no. No. Numbers for David Ortiz batting for the first time today. Red Sox win in order 
in the first inning, Holt, Bogarts, and Pedroia. Let's take a look at our Chevy key player, David Ortiz, hitting 324 with seven home runs and 11 RBIs in 20 road games this season. Yesterday, pinch hitting went 0 for 1. He's 1 for 4 in the series and ground right into the teeth of the shift. Forsyth throws him out. We've seen a few of those lately for David Ortiz. And, and frustrated by it because it has taken a number of hits away from David recently. Way back in right field. Forsyth with the throw to first base has plenty of time to get David at first base. For the first out here in the second inning. One down here in the second. Mike Carp the batter. Carp after that first pitch. Shallow right center. Bad read for Geyer initially, but he has plenty of time to recover. Two down. The baseball is back in season, so gather 20 or more of your friends, family, and coworkers for a group outing at Fenway and secure exclusive access to seats. Call 877 Red Sox 9 or visit redsox.com slash groups for more information. And I often you know, I ask the question, Don, you know, well, why does Ortiz keep hitting into the shift? Well, I mean, you don't, that's the whole idea of it. You don't want, you know, he doesn't want to take himself out of his own game, which is pulling the ball, obviously, when he gets a pitch to pull. He has the ability to go the other way, especially. You know at Fenway Park off the wall, but the fact is he's not a ground ball hitter to the left side of the infield. We're talking about how many hits that shift has taken away from David thinking some of the neighborhood of 40. That yeah, I think that high. might be a little bit high. I think that that might be high, but I mean there has been a lot of them. I remember listening to the game when you guys were talking about that. Jerry, you had talked to Ortiz about it. And he said 40 it does sound a little high, but there was definitely one right there. That's just a Ground ball into right field for a base hit, but not today. Five in a row retired by Odorizzi to start this game for the Rays. Two ground outs, two fly outs, and a strikeout. Nava strikes out. Good start for Odorizzi. Good start for both starters. Scoreless after an inning and a half. A very good first inning for Brandon Workman. He picks up a couple of strikeouts. T. Jesus, he gets on a fastball. And then he gets Longoria on a curveball. First two hitters of the game striking out. One, two, three, first inning for Workman. 
Now Brandon Workman with the good start to the afternoon. He'll deal with Will Myers, James Loney, and Brandon Geyer here in the second inning. Myers now waiting around, taking a hack at that first pitch. Myers has been struggling. Pinch hit in the game yesterday. Just a 232, four homers and 20 runs batted in. That was two for his last 26, so 77 of the last eight games. Watched him yesterday during batting practice, and they had him working out at first base, and he actually looked pretty good over there. I don't know if those are plans for the future or if something would have happened to James Loney, but uh, he was doing a lot of work over at first base. In the air to shallow right center. Incoming is Bradley. And with Hava right alongside, he makes the catch for the first out of the inning. Well, fans, you can test your Red Sox IQ right now with the MLB Preplay mobile app. Download for free and start predicting every at bat of every Red Sox game all season. Today, Preplay predicts Brandon Workman will go five innings and allow seven hits, four earned runs, three walks, and six strikeouts. That's a little different line yes. than what we've seen recently. That's the shortest innings pitch we've seen yet. Yes. One down here in the second inning for James Loney. To left field, Sizemore back. And he'll pull it in. Steve James Loney's a guy you've seen a lot of with the Dodgers and not known for his power. He's really become more of a singles hitter here with the Rays so far. And that's his swing right there. He's an opposite field gap hitter. For his first few years with the Dodgers, he would get 15 home runs and 80 to 90 RBIs, which seemed like pretty good numbers. But they always wanted him to pull the ball and hit the ball out of the park. The more he tried, the worse it got for him. He's back to being the hitter he is, and the Rays are happy with that. And just did uh, fall under 300 and in this series, now down to 296 on the year. Brendan Geyer had a very good day yesterday. There's two run double, tied the game 5 to 5, and the Rays completed the comeback to tie it up, and was won it in 15 innings. He was 4 for 7 yesterday, two doubles, two RBIs. Movement on that fastball right there by uh, Brandon Workman. A uh, little tail on it, moving back in toward the knees of Geyer. Some serious tail on that pitch. You know, Don, coming into that ball game yesterday, Geyer was a 196 hitter. He had four hits. Forsyth also had three hits. He came into that game hitting a buck 79. He's going to take the walk this time. First base runner of the day for Tampa Bay. Comes with two outs in the inning. So two down, Geyer at first, and Logan Forsyth coming up. Two no homers, four runs batted in for Forsyth. Since he's had the game, he had three yesterday since August 21st of last year against Pittsburgh. Yeah, Joe Madden today starting with the hot, staying with the hot hand, Geyer and Forsyth. Both had good nights last night. Taking off on the first pitch is Geyer. The throw down is going to be close and not in time. Stolen base for Geyer. He wasn't waiting around. Not the best pitch in the world for Brzezinski to work with. No, but it was an excellent throw by Brzezinski. It was right on the bag. Just a, a very good jump at first base by Geyer. And some pretty good speed. Head down all the way. There's a throw by Brzezinski right on the money, but not quite in time. Works from an open stance over there at first base. First career stolen base for him. And Geyer instantly into scoring position with two down. Chop foul. 
We've talked about it before, Jerry, but as far as the stance going, you have that open stance. It almost looks like it'd be tough to get back to the bag at first. Yeah, you know, they get so used to it, though, but it is, it is a little bit more of a crossover step to get back uh, to the bag at first base. But uh, a lot of players feel it helps them get that front shoulder open quicker to, you know, to get that jump towards second base. It's whatever you're comfortable with, as long as you can get back, you can get away with it. Forsyth having a chance to start more regularly. He has now started in seven of the last ten Rays games. Compared to only 15 games in the first 40 of the season. Jennifer Lopez performed Saturday, June 21st in the Grand Theater at Foxwoods Resort Casino. Buy tickets now at foxwoods.com. Out walk to Brandon Geyer. He steals second base. And Logan Forsyth with a count of one and two. One hop to Pedroia kind of exploded on him. He picks and throws and gets him. Nice play by Pedroia at second base. Two and two without a score from the drop in St. Pete. The third still scoreless on the mound for the Rays, 24-year-old Jake Odorizzi, who had a bit of a rough start to the season. He had a 6.83 ERA after the first six games, was averaging fewer than five innings, but he's turned that around, a 172 ERA in his last three games. The catalyst for that? Well, the Rays seem to think it's because he was relying too heavily on his newly developed split change that he learned from Alex Cobb in the offseason. They say he's gone back to what they think is the best secondary pitch for him, the curveball. They say it's not going away. They just wanted to pick his spots a little bit more carefully. And, Don, something to watch out for on the scoreboard. Odorizzi has short starts. He's only gone six innings twice this year, but he's won them both. We're off to a good start so far today. Liner foul into the seats behind the Red Sox dugout. Now, Odorizzi is one of those guys that came over from the Royals in that trade back in 2012. Him and Will Myers. James was, Shields deal. Right, the James Shields deal. Dave Davis also going to Kansas City. Wasn't the first time he had been traded in December 2010 involved in another blockbuster deal. One of the deal that involved Jack Greinke and Eski Bencourt. So if 
finally finds his way to the major leagues here with the Rays as a starter. First pitch called a ball, two and two. Jerry was talking earlier about him overusing his changeup, kind of falling in love with it. He does have a good one, but he's used his forcing fastball a lot more often lately, and that's why his strikeout numbers are going up. Been kind of fallen into the habit of being like a sinker slider guy. Now he'll do that and run that four seamer up, and even though he only throws about 91 92, he can throw it by guys up there. Strikeout high on the year against Cleveland, had 11 strikeouts back on May the 9th. Only game that he got into double figures in K's. And there's a base hit. Opposite field of that for A.J. Pierzynski. And the Red Sox have their first hit and base runner of the game. Now, Pazinski now is hitting five straight games as he again goes to the opposite field, gets that uh, that fastball away and slaps it that way. You know, saying on what Steve had to say about about Oda Rizzi, that they've got him on some kind of a, like a game plan now, almost like in football, where they want to you know kind of conduct his pitches through the first couple of innings so he doesn't fall in love with that changeup too early in the ball game. Charting out the first, what, 15 plays? Yeah. yeah Przinski with a base hit to get this third inning started. Grady Sizemore standing in. That's out of the eight spot. Lines it to right, and this is going to get down and head towards the corner. Przinski heading for third base. Myers digs it out of the corner. Przinski to third on the double by Sizemore, and it's second and third with nobody out. Bottom of the order getting it done here against Odorizzi. Now Sizemore, who been 0 for his last day, gets a pitch that he likes. It's a pitch that's down and one that he can hook from the middle of the plate in. And he hooks it down in that corner all this time while it's bouncing around. The Pazinski heading to third base. They have to hold him there. And Sizemore in with the two base there. Great perspective from down here in the dugout. Pazinski basically running straight at me. Brian Butterfield halfway down the third base line trying to make a decision on whether to hold him or run him. You know they're going to hold him up because Brzezinski doesn't run well and there's nobody out. Jackie Bradley Jr. taking the strike. His first at bat of the day. One for six so far in the series. There for strike two. And yesterday, when the Red Sox jumped out to the five nothing lead, it was almost like a deep breath. Like finally, yeah, they got themselves exactly. a good lead here. And the first inning, right out of the gate, right out of the gate, five runs, and you figure, well, it's going to be a good eight nine run game for them. Didn't happen. Rizzi, who had retired the first six Red Sox that he faced in the game, now. Gives up a single to Brzezinski, a double to Sizemore, working from the stretch. The juniors want to hit his last 14 at bats in this spot. And a swing and a miss. So Rizzi comes back. Speaking of strikeouts, there's his third of the day. And there's the changeup that we've been talking about, that split change that he throws. Little movement at the end of it. It dips, and uh, Bradley Jr., no contact with the infield back and two men in scoring position. Here is Brock Holt flied out to center field in the first inning. Second time through now for Jake Odorizzi. Called on May the 17th. This is already his third major league stint of the year. Back up and down to Pawtucket. That's where sometimes as a hitter you've really got to change your approach. You've got a man at third base. You got less than two outs, and you've got to get the ball into the outfield. Some type of fly ball to get that run home at least one. I mean, you're hoping for a base hit to drive in two. But you got to get one in, and plus they got the infield back, so contact is needed. The 
Jerry, I think, especially as a left-handed hitter, too, as we just saw Bradley strike out on a changeup, you have to be aware of that pitch. This is one of his favorite pitches to throw. They love it to throw it to lefties. You really have to guard against that. Certainly, if you're going to take a hack at it, you got to be able to lift it. Well, pops it up foul, back and out of play, two and two. Well, get ready to go behind the scenes with your favorite Red Sox from rest breakfast with the Brzezinski. So the musical talents of Jake Peavy. It's Red Sox all access tonight at eight. Yeah, I had a hard time looking for a changeup. I got to tell you because I never wanted to get beat on a fastball, especially in a situation like this. But uh, some guys could do it. Some guys could look for that off-speed stuff and still hit it. Two-two pitch. Full count now. We'll see how much confidence he has in that pitch right now because I would think you know he doesn't want to walk the bases loaded. But at the same time. If he thinks that's his best pitch you may see it right here. Zinski at third Sizemore at second we have one out. Exactly what he got that time to change up and able to follow it back. That wasn't one of his best ones, was it, Jerry? That kind of hung out over the plate a little bit. Didn't have a lot of downward tilt to it. Not as good as the one earlier in the bat, that's for sure. Seven pitches in the first at bat for Holt. Six so far in this one as he's seen some pitches doing his job here as the leadoff hitter top the Red Sox order. To right field lifting it Myers goes back and makes the catch. Brzezinski will tag and score. And Sizemore tags and moves to third base. Red Sox take a one nothing lead. That's exactly what I was talking about Don. You know look for something that you can lift. And he finally got that high fastball above the belt. Something he could uh, get in the air and drive. And he hits this ball very well. They get the run home. They get the man to third base now with two outs. But just contact in that situation, any contact with the exception of back to the pitcher at third base is going to get a run home. A pretty good looking professional at bat at a halt right there. Battled his way through it, fouled off a few tough pitches, and then drove the ball. A chance here for Xander Bogarts to add to this Red Sox lead. Strikeout victim in the first one of three Ks for Odorizzi so far. Under two for ten in the series so far. Change up. Bogarts bites and is down one and two. Change up down again in the zone and uh, Bogats with no contact. That's all away. To right field, but right at Will Myers out there in right field. He'll make the catch, it ends the inning. The Red Sox strike first, take a one nothing lead to two and a half.
Red Sox a one nothing advantage. We head to the bottom of the third inning. Yanel Escobar, Jose Molina, and David DeJesus to bat in the third inning. Escobar started all three games at shortstop and so it's a 254 batting average coming in. O for four in the game yesterday with a couple of walks and so for seven in the series. Take strike one. Well, Don, how they treat you guys up there? You have your twisted teas, some Dunkin' Donuts. You all good? I think we're pretty good. I have water so far. Yeah, I'm sitting down here, you know, smelling the feet of the cameraman and uh, drinking my room temperature water, actually. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you exactly? I, I'm in a cubby hole somewhere. It's, okay. it's awesome, though. I mean, you get a great view of what's going on down here. You know, sometimes you really forget uh, about how how fast the game is down here when you get up into the booth for a number of years, how quick the game moves along. Everyone thinks baseball is a small, uh, slow game, but it really isn't. It's pretty easy to me. It's, it's a fly ball to shallow center. <laughs> Jackie Bradley Jr. puts it away. I haven't seen you make a, uh, an error in years up there. <laughs> well, Escobar is retired for the first out of the third inning. We'll bring up Jose Molina. Back in there again today. And, uh, Hannigan come into the game late yesterday. 15 average, no homers, no RBIs for Molina. Do you imagine asking Molina to catch all 15 of those? No. <laughs> <laughs> One for his last 18 at the plate, two for his last 28. It's Furthermore, seven for his last 61. It has been a slow start at the plate. Certainly never known for his offensive ability. He is strictly known for his defensive ability. And, and again, the end over Mass native who started game one, came into game two, and starts game three on the bench. Molina strikes out. Workman makes quick work of him. Third strikeout for Workman, two down. Well, no sign of nerves so far for Workman at all in the first three innings. I mean, he's hitting his spots. He's hitting his location. He wants that fastball away, and that's exactly where he gets it, on the outside part of the plate. That's what they've been doing to Molina when he's been in there catching in this series. Yeah, that was just smart pitching right there. Uh, Workman's breaking ball has been outstanding so far in this game, but he realized... That Molina wasn't catching up with his fastball, so he just threw three of them right by him. And Jerry, this is really the demeanor that I remember about Brandon Workman. He does not appear to be in awe of this situation at all. Now that's what uh, the Red Sox like about him so much. You know, they like his stuff, obviously. I mean, you have to have that, but they like his demeanor, and he showed that last year in the playoffs. I mean, precious situations, and, you know, he nothing seems to faze him. He has tremendous confidence in himself. Not cocky, confidence. David DeJesus, who struck out in the first inning against Workman. We'll see what happens here. Second time through against Workman. I think sometimes pitchers have built in excuses for themselves when they say, well, I don't really know what my role is. Sometimes I'm a swing man. Sometimes I'm a spot starter. Sometimes I'm out of the bullpen. Well, Workman was in the bullpen up with the Red Sox earlier, and then they sent him down to work on becoming a starter, and he had to stretch out. And he said that was the, the main reason why his ERA was up over five, and I agree with him. I don't think that's an excuse at all. I think it takes time for a guy to build up that arm strength to go more innings and more pitches. Well, he's been bouncing and round. He's been, you know, used as a starter in spring training and then back to the bullpen and then uh, back to being a starting pitcher down at Pawtucket. It's the price you pay to be a young pitcher on your way to the big leagues. You try to get here anyway you can. Talking about the postseason last year, Jerry, eight and two thirds innings. Not allowed earned run. Yeah, very good. That's in uh, high pressure situations. In his third professional season, second round draft choice of 2010, of the University of Texas. 40th pitch. And De Jesus will take it up and away. Three and two. University of Texas has produced a few big 
Texan right-handers <laughs> over the years, haven't they? The Rockets, one of those guys, yes. Oh, yeah. Chopped down the first baseline. It is a fair ball picked by Carp. A little late getting over, but there, nevertheless, is Workman to end the inning. We play three. Red Sox enjoy a one nothing lead. have the lead as we head to the fourth inning. Red Sox Nation here in St. Pete per usual for this uh, weekend series. Red Sox wrapping it up today and then heading to Atlanta for a brief two game series against the Braves. Jake Odorizzi back on the mound and Pedroia leading it off here in the fourth inning. Dustin grounded out to second base in the first inning. Fiftieth pitch for Oda Rizzi and it is tap foul. Sign up for Eastern Free Checking and receive a free house cleaning courtesy of Maypro. Free checking and a dust free home. Another neat idea from Eastern Bank. We're here, your first. Details at easternbank.com slash clean. You see that girl walking out in the water right now? She's yes. at the beach a lot. She was here last year, too. <laughs> and she's got a tattoo on her back. It's amazing. She spends a lot of time at the beach. Every time we come down here, we see the same person. I'm going to say in the water. there is a chance that uh, that video may have been used last year and the year before that and the year before that. You don't think she's been there like every time we've been here? <laughs> in the hole on the left side and in the left field, a base hit for Pedroia. His third the Red Sox third hit of the day, first for Pedroia of the series. Yeah, Pedroia is one of the guys that faced uh, Oda Rizzi in the past. He was one for three against him in a game that he started against him uh, back at Fenway Park gets that top spin ground ball to quickly get by Yunel Escobar and pick up the leadoff base hit in the fourth. And David Ortiz who grounded out to second base into the shift last time the Logan Forsythe a little tighter to the infield here keeping things in order in the double play on the right side.
You're telling me because guys shave and then all of a sudden have success, it's because they shaved. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like uh, wearing, putting on a new pair of cleats. Had a couple days of my career where I shaved after I was 0 for 2 in the game. In the middle of the game. Absolutely. <laughs> Had to do anything I could to find it. I wanted to change my look. Maybe they wouldn't recognize me. <laughs> Start seeing some fastballs to hit again. Lead off base hit here for Pedroia. Clean shaven is Andrew Miller. 2 0 pitch. A tease with a swing and a miss. Just dropped off the table as he changes up. Yeah, good change up again. That's exactly what he wants to do. He wants it down in the zone. He wants it working away from left handed hitters. It's a great weapon for him, for everybody, but especially to the lefties. Tantalizing enough, and it is three and one as he misses with the fastball that time. You guys will notice with the shift here, Escobar continues to be the shortstop. Longoria goes to the other side of the field. That's because of the double play situation. They want to make sure their shortstop's fielding the ball. He's not on the other side of the field. He has to handle that play at second base if there's a double play. That way, you're not getting too many guys out of position. Ortiz hits it in the air to right center field. Back goes Geyer and Myers. And it is Geyer on the base of the track who makes the catch. And the player will remain at first base. Ortiz gets under that. So David's retired. One out, one on. Jerry, today's view. And Steve, today's view coming off the uh, car service that brings us to the ballpark here. This is how you enter a Tropicana field. Yeah, wait, 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 stop right now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have a car service? <laughs> yes, I have a car service here in Tampa Bay, as we really? normally do. And uh, we come in here to the area inside. This is where the trucks are. We had our production meeting right early this morning at uh, just after 8 a.m. And this is where the trucks are, and this is where our producer and director and associate producer are right inside there. And that's how we get into the ballpark here at the truck, deep in the bowels of the stadium. Amazing. I took the uh, team bus over this morning and you took a car. Well, you could have come with me if you would like. I wasn't invited. Came with Elle Duncan. She came along with us as well. Did not get invited. My car service was a cab. Cost me 12 bucks. <laughs> You're a cheap tipper. <laughs> 1 0 pitch and Carp will take the strike 1 and 1. Fouls it straight back to the screen one and two. You got to tip your cap to Geyer in center field having the awareness there on that deep drive uh, by Big Poppy that Pedroia was tagging and it was going to go to second base and he made a strong throw all the way back into second base from the wall out there. That's a pretty easy play for the base runner. You know it's not going to go out of the ballpark, so you tag up, and the play's in front of you. You can tell if it's going to be a good throw or not. Ooh, Pedroia was headed to his in a steal there as this one is grounded foul. He threw the brakes on over at first base. He was on his way. Got a bad read there, and he kind of guessed. He got such a great jump, he scared himself and stopped. Oops. Expecting the pitcher to see that and throw back to first base, and then uh, just had to completely come to a, a complete stop uh, because he had such a good jump. We'd like to see this Red Sox team starting to play a little bit more aggressive. At least they have a lead. It's been so long since they've had one. Hard to play aggressive baseball when you're. Losing games and behind in games. 
It seems like, uh, especially during the homestand, that uh, they were down four to nothing, five to nothing early in games. Very difficult to play that way on a daily basis. Yeah, it's tough to do things when you're falling behind uh, basically every day. And, and Farrell, you know, admits uh, I don't have the same lineup I had a year ago. I've got to do some things differently. I got to play some hit and run. I've got to sacrifice a little bit more than I had in the past. But you, you know, game situation has to call for it. Check on Pedroia back to the bag, crosses over to return. John Farrell may have been second guessed in the last homestand at Fenway Park more than he'd been second guessed the entire season last year in small ball situations. Why did you bunt here? Why didn't you bunt in that situation? That play kind of came up a lot for him in that series. You think about last year, and really there wasn't a lot of second guessing just because uh, they were winning on a regular basis. And it seems to be under the microscope when you're losing. And in the midst right now of a nine game losing streak, everything is under the microscope. Well, I didn't agree with that bunt last week. You know, we were talking about that. Yep. A couple of men on base. And Ross David Ross. Play. Yeah. No. I, you know, I, he might run into him. I mean, it, it may tie the ball game up. Yeah, and on top of that, Jerry, there's certain guys, and everybody would like to think that every baseball player is a complete player and can do all the things that are required of them, but there are certain guys you don't ask to bunt, and that's probably one of them right there. Not what they do best. Two balls, two strikes to Carp, one out, Pedroy at first base. Fastball away. Foul it back, stay alive. HB Hood salutes the Red Sox scholars presented by Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Boston middle schoolers receive college scholarships, and the first recipients of fifth graders from 2003 are graduating college this year. We thank HB Hood for funding the dreams of college. Carp upset with himself because he just saw the best pitch he's going to see in that at bat to hit, and he fouled it off. at first base one down full count here to Carp. Ball four and he works the walk a nine pitch it back and there's the first base on ball served up by Odorizzi. Good job there by Carp to Worley uh, working a very nice at bat against Odorizzi to draw that walk he got the change up. On the three two count and it was not tantalizing enough. It was up in the zone up and away so didn't have to worry about swinging at it. Jim Hickey the pitching coach out there to talk to Odorizzi the rest of the infield joining the conversation. Coming in June, a brand new show on Nesson, Nesson Live, presented by Cross Insurance. Your pregame to the pregame show, Monday through Friday. Join L. Duncan and Sarah Davis for a new interactive show. Look out in June for Nesson Live. Terry, you were talking about this would have been one of the things that you would outlaw in the game, having everybody come in there and talk. It used to be when you and I played that there was they only allowed one infielder to come in. They told everyone else they had to stay at their position. Yeah, that's Not exactly sure. right. When the manager came out, they only allowed one infielder to come in uh, to have a discussion with the pitcher. And a lot of times that was to go over a possible bunt sign, uh, something like that. But uh, everybody comes in now. It's just just the meaning of the mound. Yeah, I mean, what do you think James Loney is contributing to that conversation? Nothing. Right there? Absolutely nothing. Every time I went to the mound, I contributed absolutely nothing to the conversation. <laughs> Let's check in on the poll and see what uh, everyone else thinks. Right now, in forced time between pitches, is the leader far and away. They don't like our. They don't like our. Uh, no no coach coaches visits to the mound. They don't no, like that. No. <laughs> trying to sell out to all of Major League Baseball. It's not taking off the way you'd like. No, not with the fans anyway. Maybe they like to see coaches go to the mound.
Bubba struck out in the second inning. His first at bat went looking. One of three Ks today for Oda Rizzi. Boy at second. Carp at first with one out. Nav is one of those guys in this lineup now that has to catch fire a little bit. Went down to Triple A, swung the bat well. We get some playing time. Now that he's back up here, got to do something with it. I hit over 300 last year in the championship team with the Red Sox and appeared to be surprised at the time that he was being sent down. Sort of felt like he kind of made it. And it takes a while before you've actually made it before your possibility to go down with the numbers game the Red Sox had. And the addition of Brady Sizemore as well. This will fall harmlessly down by the Red Sox pen. And one thing Nava did talk about it that his mechanics were all messed up and he was lifting too many baseballs. He he did have a uh, you know he, he always has a slight uppercut swing but it became more obvious I think early in the season and we were seeing a lot of fly ball outs from him. You know he is a fly ball hitter there's no question about that but we were seeing way too many of them. Two home runs in the majors this year with the Red Sox. Last one he had was in Chicago against the White Sox back on the 17th of April. And both of his home runs have come against right handed pitching from the left side. Is going to go out. They went back and forth a bunch. Now we're just going to talk it up. Favorites for Nava, Dumb and Dumber's favorite movie, the Cheesecake Factory is favorite restaurant, Wyan Island's a place you like to go, and Hidden Talent. Never seen him with a guitar. No, I have not either. We see a lot of guys in the Red Sox clubhouse carry guitars around, but I've never seen Nava play one. Apparently it is a hidden talent. It's the air guitar. A lot of people can do that. <laughs> the fouls it back. We'll do it again. Two and two. And appearances in right field, left field. Some at first base this year for the Red Sox, a position that he learned last year in spring training. Eighteenth game he's appeared in for the Red Sox this season. So at 253 with the Paw Sox at 24 games this year. A little soft liner, Forsythe back to get it. Two down. Well, the Cardiovascular Institute at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center invites you to join the club. The Walking Club gives free tools and tips to get you and your family walking towards better health. More at bidmc.org slash walking. Now you don't have to be in an exceptionally hard throw to jam somebody. And there was a good example there. Oda Rizzi going inside with a 90 mile an hour fastball, but right in the hands of Daniel Nauber and got him to that little pop up to second base. Soft line drive. First and second, two down. A.J. Brzezinski, the batter. Brzezinski with a three run home run in the first inning yesterday as part of a five run first inning attack for Boston. They appear to be on their way. The problem is they did not score again. And the Rays tied it up in the fifth and then went ahead in the 15th to win. And you're generally swinging at the first or second pitch and swings at the second one this time as one and one. 
Jerry talked about the importance of being able to jam hitters, even though you don't have a great fastball. I think that's the advantage of the four-seam fastball. So many guys have gone away from it. They want to sink the ball. They want to move it. He's worked the outside part of the plate well, but he keeps that four-seamer true and in on the hands, and even though it's 90 miles an hour, it gets in there, and he's doing a nice job of working both sides of the plate with different pitches. One of the problems he has endured so far has been the number of pitches early in outings. And again, he was getting up there here. This is pitch 77 through three and two thirds. Foul back again. So Mickey is pitching coach. The Rays as a staff with a 3.93 ERA in the middle of the pack. He's taking a long time in between pitches. Krasinski gets time and backs out. Seems like at times he's having a difficult time getting on the same page with Molina. Defensive swing from AJ fouled off to the left. I tell you, if I was the pitcher, as long as Molina's been around and as many hitters as he's seen. I think the fingers he puts down, I'd, I'd probably take advantage of that. Brzezinski sends one, diving at second is foresight to rob him of a base hit. And to rob the Red Sox some more runs. Krasinski's gone so are the Red Sox thanks to the catch by Logan Forsythe. It's one nothing Boston at the end of three and a half. Our economy and community strong. That's why they've been named the number one SBA lender in Massachusetts five years in a row. Eastern Bank, here, your first. Skyway Bridge. Beautiful weather here in Tampa Bay, in the St. Pete area, where the Red Sox and Rays wrap up their three game series today. Well, pitch ball game so far. Red Sox have a 1 0 advantage to the bottom of the fourth inning. It is two, three, and four for the Rays. Evan Longoria, Matt Joyce, and Will Myers. 
Gloria sends one with authority to deep right field. Nava going back at the wall, and that ball is gone. We've got a shortage of home runs for Longoria on the year. He came in with four, and there's his fifth home run of the season. Ties the game. Well, when Longoria is going well, that's exactly what he could do. Use the whole ballpark with power. He, he came a little bit full happy. That time he gets a pitch out over the plate, hands inside the baseball, and drives it hard to the opposite field for the home run. All-time Rays home run leader has just homered to tie this game. Here's Matt Joyce. With 67 home runs now for Longoria. They've been struggling before this series, but to Friday night had the three hit performance. A couple of hits in yesterday's game, and now a home run. Evan Longoria is Joyce here. He's 0 for 1. He grounded a short first time up. On the ground, but foul. I was talking about that on Friday night. I was watching, you know, look at his numbers to say he's struggling. I, so I watched batting practice that night, and I mean, he was really struggling in batting practice. He was frustrated with himself, you know, kind of banging his head, banging his bat. And it was, you could tell things were not going well for him, but uh, things certainly went well on that last swing. And in the series, really, for Longoria as a whole, he's turned it around here with the Red Sox here, unfortunately, for Boston. They check. No, he did not. Says Larry Van Over. And Larry's glad to be at third base today after the long night behind the plate last night. All 15 innings behind the dish. Got a few gray hairs out of that one. Popped up foul off to the left. That'll get out of play up by the catwalks. Well, have you seen our new Sunday pregame show, Nesson Clubhouse? It's where kids run the show. We're looking for youth baseball and softball teams to be part of a live studio audience. Visit Nesson.com slash clubhouse sweepstakes to enter your son or daughter's team now. I wonder if I was right today on the show uh, with Gary and uh, Big Poppy's kid doing imitations of uh, batting swings. Pretty sure I was correct because uh, the one in the promo that we were showing, I think he was doing Mike Napoli. Uh -huh. You also picked the Angelo to beat Gary. I oh yeah, he's I mean he's really good. You see him do it in the clubhouse all the time. And just joining us, Mike Napoli placed on the DL today. Three-two pitch to left. Sizemore moving back to the track to make the catch. First out of the fourth inning. Guys, Tom Foley, the longtime third base coach here in Tampa Bay, is giving a nice little tribute to Don Zimmer wearing his number 66. Foley's number is generally six. Zimmer, of course, the former manager of the Red Sox, longtime bench coach of the New York Yankees with Joe Torre. He's been in this organization down here for 10 years now as a senior advisor. He just had a, a heart procedure. He's recovering in the hospital, and Foley's showing him his love. We generally see him anytime we're down here in Tampa Bay, and he's not been around, obviously. And had some uh, some health issues over the last couple of years that have kept him away from the ballpark. It's amazing, Jerry. I know you've heard the stories from Don Zimmer way back when he was with the Yankees. He said, "I'm done. I'm quitting. I'm going home. I'm going down to Florida. I watch my grandkids grow up and watch them." Playing their little league games, but he cannot get this game out of his blood. Now it's a nice thing too that the uh, Rays have done for him. Let him uh, be around, be around baseball, similar to what uh, the Red Sox did with Johnny Pesky. You know, uh, it, it, those guys just—they just, just got to be at the park. They have to be around players. They have to be around coaches, managers. Uh, it's just part of their life. 
foul down the left field line. Green light there at 3 0 for Myers, and he fouls it off out ahead. Strike. I just didn't like it. Full count. Good pitch. Fastball down and in. Got the inside corner. Knee high. Nice job by Pazinski to frame that pitch. And he loses him. Ball four. Second walk given up by Brandon Workman. Comes with one out of the inning. One on James Loney coming up. And Loney leading the team in RBIs and in average. 26 RBIs and started the day at a 296 average. Good fly to left in his first at bat back in the second inning. Runner goes in the first pitch. It will hit and run here, and it is to center for Bradley Jr. who makes the catch. Myers back to the bag at first, two down. I, I agree with you, Don. It was a hit and run. I think Loney might have been caught by surprise by getting that sign uh, on the first pitch. Myers certainly not a base dealer. He's got one in the year. He's been caught one time. Takes off, takes a peek back. When you look back, that's a pretty good indication it's a hit and run, but the the line drive right of Jackie Bradley Jr. Two down, Myers at first base, and Brandon Geyer walked in the second inning. And two walks allowed by Workman. There goes a runner again, and this one shot through the right side into right field. It just keeps on going. Does Myers to third base? He's putting the pressure on here. Is it his first and third with two down? Well, that time it was a straight out steal, but uh, Guy had a good pitch to hit, so he shoots it right in the vacant hole. See Pedroia covering second base. Wide open is that second base position, and on the third base goes Will Meyer. Joe Madden does some out of the box kind of things with his Tampa Bay team and has done that since he's showed up here. But you wonder why after a Longoria home run, which he crushed the ball, Joyce came up and hammered one to left field. Then Myers drew the walk. You figure maybe you let your players pick their pitches and let them go to go to work. And then a hit and run on a first pitch with James Loney up there that didn't work out. Now they do have th first and third. Logan Forsythe made a very nice defensive play to end last inning and keep the Red Sox from adding on to their leads at a good series. I think that's why even Loney might have been surprised there was a hit and run put on in that situation with Myers at first base on the first pitch. Since he's flashing signs in case there's a double steal on whether there's going to be a throw at all at second base, there's not going to be. They don't want those middle infielders moving. Hit into left field. Myers will score from third, a two out RBI single for Morgan Forsythe. And the Rays take a 2 1 lead. Well, second time around has been better for the Tampa Bay Rays against Workman. Forsythe continues to have a very good series. Top spin ground ball gets through. Red Sox fall behind 2 to 1, and out comes Juan Yebes.
School is almost out of session and summer is around the corner, so get your Sox tickets now. Student tickets are available for every game during May and June to celebrate the end of the school year. Tickets start at just $9. Go to RedSox.com slash student today. Now Escobar coming up here with runners at first and second for Tampa Bay. They have struck twice. They're in the bottom of the fourth inning to take a 2-1 lead. Escobar fly to center in the third and is 0 for 8 in the series. This is where some Red Sox pitchers have had trouble turning the page and stopping the bleeding on an inning that can get away from you. you scored two in this inning already. With two outs now, you can't afford to let Escobar get a base hit. Thought about it, lays off, and it's 2 0. Workman did not allow a base hit first time through. He did walk a batter. So far in this inning, he has walked one and given up three hits, including the leadoff home run by Longoria. Hopped up, shallow right. Petroya out, Nava in. And Petroya makes the catch that ends the inning. A home run for Evan Longoria started the inning, tied the game, but the Rays grab another run and take a 2 1 lead. Technologies will donate $50 to the Greg Hill Foundation. Echo Store and the Greg Hill Foundation respond immediately to improve the lives of local families touched by tragedy. To learn more, log on to echostore.com. Echo Store Technologies, your data center solutions provider. Evan Longoria with a home run and Logan Forsyth with an RBI double. And right now the game is 2-1. to one. Here's your... Pitching live for Jake Odorizzi brought to you by your Eastern Lexus dealers. Four innings, one run. Already his 80th pitch as he starts this fifth inning. Brady Sizemore, Jackie Bradley Jr., and Brock Holt to bat here in the fifth. Sizemore with a double in the third inning. In between innings here, 
with Workman obviously coming up here and getting a start. And Juan Nieves spending a lot of time with him in between the innings, talking to him and kind of pumping him up, talking to him about the pitches that he threw that were good. I think you see that more with a younger pitcher Jerry, than you do a veteran guy. I don't think coach. so. You know, Don, I think, I think, you know, guys get down on themselves a lot of times when they see base hits, but it's not always on a bad pitch. You know, sometimes they make good pitches and they, and they get hit. And I think, uh, I think it's the same for a young guy. Obviously, it builds his confidence a little bit, but it's, you know, the older, older guys like to hear that, too. He's the left center field falling fast. Guy are coming in and diving. Can't make the catch. Size more aggressively heads for second base, and he'll get there. Well, the play in front of him and he takes second. Yeah, good hustle by Sizemore. Nice effort by Geyer in center field. Yeah, that's really a great aggressive play all the way around. Geyer covered a lot of ground, actually got in front of the left fielder to try to make that play because he wasn't going to get in here and do that. And then Sizemore hustling out of the box the entire way. He ends up on second base. Just a really nice baseball play. Size more with the play in front of him because uh, he doesn't need any help from a coach on that. He can see that all the way. He knows he has it gauged and knows he can get, get, get into second base. So he is two for two in the game. Lead off double here in the fifth inning and Jackie Bradley Jr. coming up. Bradley struck out swinging in the third inning. One of three K's for Oda Rizzi. Barry, when you were talking about the coaches and the, and the confidence that they instill in you, I always found that my best hitting coaches were guys that made me feel like a better hitter. It may not have had anything to do with they with what they said around the batting cage or in the extra work we were doing, but when I went to the plate, if they made me feel like I was a better hitter than I really was, I thought that helped me. It's all about positive reinforcement. A ball backing up is loan. He's going to need help from Oda Rizzi, who covers the bag for the out. But Sizemore does move along to third base with now one out in the inning. And those are the kind of things now the Red Sox, I mean, must do. They have, you know, they get a man at second base, nobody out. You've got to advance in the third base. And, and Bradley that time making contact and getting the ground ball to the right side and getting that uh, and getting Sizemore to third base. Interesting now. Infield coming in with one out now if there was nobody out in the inning there'd be much bigger chance for a big inning They probably would not bring the infield in but with one out Joe Madden elects to bring him in with Holt at the plate Holt is fly down to center last time up a sacrifice fly to right Not in the Red Sox with their only run to this point but a chance to bring in size more here I like the fact that even though Jackie Bradley Jr. has been struggling at the plate, he made a productive out right there to move the runner over. And when he got back to the bench here, every member of the Red Sox team came over and gave him a high five, understanding what he's going through and also knowing that that was a productive out that's going to help this team. Hold down 0 and 2. Bogart's waiting on deck. One out. Brady Sizemore at third base, representing the tying run. Red Sox trailing two to one. Having to throw 31 pitches in the fourth inning really set him back from a pitch count perspective. This will be his 90th pitch of his outing. And a swing and a miss, able to get Holt to strike out. Big strike out there. It's his fourth of the day, two down. Uh, he, he goes back to his go to changeup. And, and when he needs it out and needs it badly, that's the pitch that he will go to consistently. Last time, Holt had a fastball lifted in the air. To get a sacrifice fly, this time he gets a changeup in the fifth inning with a man in third base and a strikeout results. Nick insurance, great service, great coverage, and a great price for auto, home, or life insurance. 
Down for Xander Bogarts. 0 for 2 in the game. He is struck out, flied out to right. Look out. Bogarts getting his face out of the way. Yeah, really pinching Bogarts on the left side of the infield. Oh, well, Bogarts gets hit. Last ball up and in. This is the first time that time connects on the arm. Yeah, twice going trying to go inside on Bogarts. The second time he gets them. Certainly not intentional. And they'd rather pitch to Bogarts than Petroya in this situation. Bogarts been uh, roughed up a little bit the last couple of nights. The Cramping the hamstring, getting hit by a pitch today. And look, another meeting on the mound. <laughs> Jim Hickey, the pitching coach, is out there. Ace Ticket, the official Red Sox ticket partner, has the best seats at the lowest prices to all the games at Fenway, all with a 200% guarantee. Right now, Ace Ticket has special savings on all Red Sox games. Treat yourself or someone special. Visit Ace Ticket or call 1 800 My Seats. Jerry, it seemed to. The way it used to be is if you were a dead ball hitter, they would try to throw the ball away from you and try to get you to roll over pitches and try to make you uncomfortable. But do you think that Tampa Bay is the type of team that actually pitches into their shifts? We saw them shift for Big Poppy. They throw him inside. He hits the ball to the right side and they get him out. You just talked about how they pinch the left side of the infield with Escobar and Longoria. On Bogarts, and they threw him hard in twice, almost trying to get him to hit into that little bit of a shift. Yeah, that's exactly right. They had the uh, shortstop and third baseman very tight together, and two pitches inside, hoping that he would try to pull. The thing of Bogarts right now is he's not handling the ball away very well, the fastball or breaking ball. He's not he's not using the gap, so they're almost making him pull, and that's why you're seeing that defense set up the way it is against him. First and third, two down. Pedroia down on the count, 0 and 1. Called strike on a borderline pitch. All this time, 1 and 1. He sizes more at third. Xander Bogarts crossed the diamond at first. Two and one. And for Odorizzi, he has gone five innings or less in seven of his last eight starts. And now four and two thirds working here in the fifth inning. Trying to get out of this jam. All back and it's two and two. That's good location again with that fastball. You know, not overpowering by any means, but in a good spot. He gets it in up high on the hands of Dustin Pedroia. Dustin trying to get the barrel of the bat out. Can't do so. A little bit late. I don't think Dustin's ever seen a pitch like that that he ever let go by. He's hacking at that one. And usually able to keep it in foul ter territory. One of the better high ball hitters for a small player that I've seen. The boy fouls off another, this one to the right. And Poppy waiting on deck, hoping to get a chance here in the fifth inning as the Red Sox try to, at the very least, tie this game up. It chops it to short. Escobar will go to second for the four shot that ends the inning and gets Odorizzi out of the jam. The Rays have a 2 1 lead halfway through this one.
photo of the game. Tweet your photo to hashtag Ness and Fan Photo for a chance to be shown on our broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Today's photo is from Coach Jones, who got a chance to meet Jackie Bradley Jr. before a recent game. Jackie Bradley Jr. and the Red Sox trail the Rays two to one here into the bottom of the fifth inning. Jose Molina leading it off. He's a strikeout victim in the third. He's 0 for 1. That photo could become a collector's item considering that was the only day Jackie Bradley Jr. let his hair down. That was like a 24 hour period, right? And he braided it right back up. Are you taking pictures down there, Steve? I hear a lot of uh, shuttling going on down there. No, but I am in a camera well. Which <laughs> <laughs> that explains that. I thought you were taking your own photos. No. Nope. Trying to take Don's view away from me, huh? No, not right. I, can, I almost can see you guys up there. <laughs> One, two strikes here to Molina. Thought about it, lays off. AJ wants him to check. They do, and he didn't go. Molina to Jesus and Longoria here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Popped up. Harp into foul ground. One down to the bottom of the fifth. Well, Tuesday on the Red Sox report, the 2004 World Champion Red Sox will reunite at Fenway May 28th for a 10th anniversary celebration. A decade after the curse was lifted, relive the memories of 2004 during back-to-back -back Red Sox reports on Tuesday at 5. And Manny says he's coming to that, right? Really? I, I know that's that. what David Ortiz said. Wow. We'll great see. to see Manny. Huh? It'd be great to see It'd Manny. It'd be great to see Manny. Did I get that right from the truck? Manny signed with the Cubs to be a player coach? I did not know that. In AAA? Coach Manny? Coach? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Manny, but. Yeah. <laughs> got a laugh. This is down the line and a fair ball. The Jesus headed for second base as Nava digs it out. Here comes the throw. And the Jesus easily sliding it a second, a one out double. Now, the, the Jesus has had a nice series here against the Red Sox. Uh, line shot right here past Mike Cobb at first base. And picks up that one out double to get in the scoring position. Cobb pretty close to the line there. Goes in the dive. But that ball quickly by him was hit very hard by D.A. Zeus. Darn, darn near a cop, carbon copy of the, the shot he hit down there in his last at-bat. That carp was able to corral and throw on to Workman for the out, but he got this one past him. One out to Jesus at second base, seven Longoria the batter. The home run in the fourth inning, his fifth home run of the year, opposite field shot for Evan Longoria. Got the time, tied the score one to one. Rays would add another run in the fourth inning and lead it two to one now. And there for a strike one and one. I think, Jerry, that was an excellent example on that replay of how. Effortlessly, Longoria just drives the ball to the opposite field. There's not a lot of extra movement in his swing. It's so fluid. Let that ball travel deep into the strike zone, and then really just rifled it into right field for a homer. I think he's he's always the best when he's going from right center field to uh, to left field line, and and uh, that means his hands are uh, getting inside the baseball instead of hooking the ball. Gets in trouble when he tries to pull too much, and when he tries to pull too much, those hands roll over a little bit, and he gets himself in trouble. When he has a swing like he did last time, he can get hot in a hurry. Now 
Arnold off to the right, two and two. Trying a similar swing that time, except yeah. the pitch was a little bit more inside. Absolutely right. I mean, he was trying to pull his hands in and, and hit that ball the other way, too. A little bit of an inside out. Longoria lines it into left field, a base hit. The Jesus had to make sure, so he's just reaching third now. He wanted to make sure he got through that left side of the liner. And it's first and third with one out. And, and when you do that, when you have that kind of approach, you get those kind of hits. You know, that's not a bad curveball at all from Workman. That ball's down low, and Longoria goes right down there with it, and it hooks it into left field on the off-speed pitch. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Jerry. I mean, if he is thinking pull on that ball right there, he strikes out. The ball gets down and away from him too quickly. But because he's thinking up the middle and the other way, his hands stay in the hitting zone so long. As you said, that wasn't a bad pitch. By the time his hands start to roll over, he's right on the ball, and he shoots it to left instead. We're at the corners here for the Rays. One down for Matt Joyce. His third at bat here against Brandon Workman. This is grounded to short, flat out to the warning track and left. One thing I can't see down here is the bullpen guys thinking maybe someone start has to start thinking about dancing around down there, don't you think? So far, nobody has. Now, one of the problems is everybody got used last time. <laughs> yeah. I know that Tazawa and Badenhop are guys that they would like to keep unavailable. They've both thrown four out of the last five days. So those guys probably won't see action, but the guy that has come up making his first start this season, you don't want to let this game get out of hand too quickly if he gets in trouble here. Alex Second Wilson. ball has come down now, and yeah. Alex Wilson is going to get up and start the throw. He, we did not see him in the game last night. He has not been used since uh, rejoining the Red Sox on Friday. Two will pitch will miss three and oh. Alex Wilson just throwing his first pitch of warm up in the pen. Yeah, he better heat it up quick. I like what Workman has done so far, but we all understand how quickly it can go south if you, if you start to get tired or you start to lose your your command of pitches. And this hasn't been a great hitting team down here, but you're talking about going through the middle of their order right now. There for a high strike. Brandon Workman's pitching line is brought to you by Ace Tickets. On a third, five hits, two runs. He's walked two, struck out three. His next pitch will be his 80th. Madden calls Joyce maybe his best pure left handed hitter. There's ball four to load the bases. Third walk given up by Workman. We can have a coach come out here, Jerry. Juan Nieves back out again. Well, actually, I think Workman is lucky that uh, Joyce took that curveball because that was not a good curveball. That was a hanging breaking ball right there. And if, jo if Joyce had swung at that, he might have hit that ball a long way. Instead, he takes it to ball four. That ball just kind of rolled up the home plate. Bases loaded, one down. Will Myers coming up. Myers flying out to center in the second, walked and scored in the fourth. Two for five with the bases loaded so far this season. Yeah. 
Ball to ball. De Jesus at third, Longoria at second, Joyce at first with one out. On the ground at third base, Hope will go to second for one. On to first, it'll be late, and the run scores. In from third comes to Jesus, and the Rays take a 3 1 lead. Now, uh, Holt had a long throw to make the second base. You wonder if it might have been easier. I don't know if he was close enough to third base to tag third and go across the diamond. No, he was backing up. He was backing up at second base. Tries to make the play that way. Good hard slide at second base by Joyce to kind of throw the balance off of Pedroia. And, Jerry, I think one of the tools that nobody ever talks about with Myers is that he can run pretty well. Gets down the line well here. That ball was hard hit to Brock Holt at third, but as you said, that's a long throw all the way down to second base and then make that turn. Myers gets down there pretty quickly. Yeah, and credit him for hustling down the line. You know, big power hitter, guy that hit some home runs and gets the ground ball with the, in that situation, but still hustles to beat out the double play. <laughs> you know why? Doesn't get the RBI if it's a double play. <laughs> well, James Loney here with runners at first and third and two down. He's 0 for 2 in the game. Slide to left and lined out to center. Myers, but back to the bag. And we saw Myers go earlier in this ball game, and, and Workman's not real quick to home plate. He's a big, tall guy. Takes a little bit of time to uh, unwind to get that ball to home plate. And he fouls it off, two and one. It's a scary pitch for me to a guy like James Loney. I'd much rather see them use the breaking ball down hard on Loney's back leg rather than work middle away to Loney, as we talked about before. He has a really nice opposite field swing. And they're going with the sinker away again. Two and two. The Red Sox fans, here's your chance to be part of history like Big Poppy and own the 2004, 2007, and 2013 authentic World Series rings. Support your team charity by entering the Red Sox Foundation's ring raffle at redsox.com slash ring raffle. Remember the grand prize winner gets authentic World Series rings from the last three World Series. Balls, two strikes, two down here. James Loney batting with Evan Longoria third and Will Myers at first. Slider down and in. They're still going away with that sinker. Only well, chops it back up the middle, but Bogarts is there. Does he win the foot race? No! And a run scores. Longoria is in. Arriving on the scene quickly was Myers, and the call on the field is that Myers beat it, and it'll be a 4 to 1 lead for the Rays. We'll see. Here comes John Farrell. Bogarts is, is leaving the field. He thinks he got there first. 
Looks like he did. Looks like he did get there first. Now my angle down here, it looked very close, and it looked like he got in there before Myers again. But this is the third play we've seen Will Myers using his speed to make a difference in this game, or potentially on this play. That is going to be challenged, but I think uh, I think this will probably get overturned. Yeah, I think so too. And Jerry, this might be one of those situations where, as a young player in Bogarts, you say, "Hey, you know what? Just go ahead and take the easy out and throw the ball to first base instead of making this a closer play than it has to be." That's exactly what I was going to say. If the thing was not overturned. <laughs> He's, yeah. <laughs> would have been a much easier, much easier play to go to first base. Yeah, I mean, all the guys are coming off the field now. We saw a big replay of it on the big screen here, and it was clear that Bogarts won the race to, to second base, and the entire team's coming off the field to hit. And he is indeed out. The call made by Larry Venover, the home plate umpire. That is the inning. So the Rays end up with one run and take a 3-1 to one lead. Osprey Coors Light, the Red Sox' current nine-game losing streak is the second longest for a reigning World Series champion in the last 20 years. For the Marlins, as they were known in 1998. And as Jake Odorizzi back on the hill now has another run. 3-1 Tampa Bay. David Ortiz leading it off. He's employing the full shift per usual on the right side. Good 0 for 2. He grounded into the shift in the second inning and then flying out to the warning track in center in the fourth. It is in an even 100 pitches. Now 101 and his action in the pen. Over said that uh, Ortiz did not swing. Joel Peralta warming in the pen for Tampa Bay. First action we've seen out there. Oh, for ball three. The rest of the way through the order for the Red Sox, with the exception of Nava, who's a switch hitter. Center field again. Guyers get it under control again and makes the catch. 
And hey, Red Sox Nation, want the inside scoop from Dunkin' Donuts? Follow at Dunkin' Boston on Twitter. It's about exclusive contests, news, and more happening in Boston, Worcester, Cape Cod, Southern New Hampshire, and everywhere in between. Follow at Dunkin' Boston on Twitter today. Red Sox run on Dunkin'. One out of the sixth inning from Mike Carp. He's flied out and walked today. Mentioning that the rest of the hitters in the order are left handed and they have a righty up in the pen. Mainly because Ramos threw three innings yesterday. And they only have Jake McGee as their other lefty down there, so they're going to have to bring the right handers out of the pen. And Peralta getting up a little bit earlier than he normally would in a game. Swing and a miss, and Carp strikes out. Fifth strikeout for Jake Odorizzi. Toyota Game Break is brought to you by buyatoyota.com, Toyota's official website for deals. Here's Tom Karen, TC. All right, Tom, incredible. He is on fire. Encarnacion doing it again, and the Blue Jays vying for their 29th win of the year. They came into today's after a 28 and 22 record and atop the American League East. Seems like the Blue Jays are what people thought the Blue Jays were going to be last year. As we mentioned, Don, when they were in town, their pitching is getting a little bit better than it had been earlier in the season. Ground ball down to first, picked on the backhand by Loney. He'll stand up and tag the bag. It's a 1 2 3 sixth inning for Jake Oda Rizzi. It's a 3 1 Tampa Bay lead. Mason's wide selection of Green Mountain Coffee K Cup packs will keep you running and guarantees to satisfy any fan base. What about 11:30 a.m. and get free same-day delivery? Who? A WB Mason. Well, it's three to one Tampa Bay on top of Boston as we head to the last half of the sixth inning. This call to the bullpen is brought to you by your local New England Ford dealers. Alex Wilson on the mound now for the Red Sox after Brandon Workman went the first five innings. Leading it off is Brandon Geyer. For Brandon Wilson with Pawtucket this season, 19 or 18 games for the Paw Sox, 1-0 with a 1.42 earned run average. This one is chopped left side and cut off by Holt. Sidearm toss in time to get Brandon Geyer. 
Send it down to L. Don, Alex Wilson's been with the team for two whole days now. That's pretty long considering his last stint, which was back on April 23rd. They brought him up for one day in that Yankee series, but he did not play and was optioned back to the Paw Sox the next day. But as any young guy would say, he was fine with that. He says, I didn't throw, but as long as I'm the one that keeps getting the phone calls, I'm fine with that. Yeah, he's with the team in Syracuse and had to find his way here uh, much like Daniel Nava did, get the uh, midnight call and then the 4 a.m. wake-up call. In order to get here on Friday, been here for the entire series, but pitching for the first time here today. It is Major League debut last year with the Red Sox, one and one, 4.88 ERA. Basically a fastball, slider, changeup type pitcher. In the air to right field, right at Nava, who is positioned perfectly for the second out of the inning. Well, tomorrow night it's the season ending behind the B. Don't miss the All Access Pass to Round Two of the Stanley Cup Playoffs against Montreal tomorrow night at 7:30. To view outtakes or to catch up on previous episodes, visit BostonBruins.com/slash/behind the B. Two outs here in the sixth inning for Yanel Escobar. Brandon Workman today five innings five hits three runs he walked three struck out three leaves on the hook and your thoughts on his outing today first of the year well I mean not the best outing we've seen him throw but I mean not a disaster either and certainly warranting another one from him I, you know, I, I really believe Don I, I think this kid stays at the major league level he's going to be a winning pitcher for the Red Sox. Escobar batting for the third time. He's flied out twice. And it takes a pitch high for ball three. Last year, Alex Wilson had three different stints with the Red Sox, and as El mentioned, already his second of this year. One of the big advantages for a player, young guy, to get called up, even if you don't pitch and you get sent back down is the pension time that starts to add up and I don't know Jerry if it's the same way that it used to be you're paying for your minor league insurance coverage once you come to the big leagues you get major league coverage and it's totally paid for that's the way it used to be I believe it's that same way so there are other advantages to getting called up other than the fact that hey guess what you are now in the big leagues and your meal money's a lot higher than this <laughs> too in uh, AAA and your salary's a lot higher than it was in AAA a lot of these guys find Split salaries. Or if they're in the major league level, they make a certain amount. If they're in the minor league level, they make a certain amount. And two down, Escobar at first base, and here's Jose Molina. And it has struck out and fouled out as a quick check on Escobar at first, having to dive back to the bag. Miss from Molina. Steve, you're pretty close to the surface down there. Your thoughts about this uh, AstroTurf that uh, the Rays play on here at Tropicana Field? Well, it's way better than the turf that Jerry and I used to have to play on. And Jerry talked about once you play a few games on the turf, how your hamstrings start to hurt and your knees start to hurt. But not nearly as bad as the old turf where they used to pretty much lay a piece of carpet down on some concrete. This is much, much nicer. And he goes chasing 0-2. Having a tough time at the plate. Yeah, he is. He's, uh, he's had a tough time all season long and with all kind of pitches. That's the breaking ball right there. He's had trouble getting around in the fastball. He's in the big leagues right now and still playing because he can catch. Need a ground ball out of him. Runner goes in the 0 2. It's a ground ball to Petroya. He's on the move, but cuts back, makes the play, and fires the first to end the inning. We're through six from the trop with the Rays on top 3-1.
Cartridges may fail, while original HP cartridges are guaranteed to work the first time every time. No runs, streaks, or errors. Get yours from WB Mason, an HP preferred partner. Who but WB Mason? Three to one, Tampa Bay on top of Boston as we head into the seventh inning. The pitcher for the Rays, Joel Peralta, into the game. His 24th appearance, one and three, with a 4.64 earned run average. 21 strikeouts, Dave walks, and opponents hitting at 222 against Peralta. Nice day for Peralta with this appearance. He becomes the all time leader in relief appearances for this organization. 251 of them. Jerry had said that he, he, he's, he's up and pitching a little earlier than he's used to, but he's certainly got up a bunch of times to do it. They have been tied with former Red Sox pitcher Dan Wheeler. His club record for Dan Wheeler had been here for parts of seven seasons. Seven consecutive scoreless appearances for Peralta. In between pitches, you have a chance to go to uh, the refrigerator and get a refreshment yes. if you like because it takes forever. 34.6 seconds between pitches. Makes him the slowest worker in the major leagues. He has to go through a whole bunch of antics so that nobody picks up where he's using the pine tar from. <laughs> Foul tipped off the bat of AJ Krasinski. Tailing fastball that time up and away from Brzezinski that he chases. And a real good pitch to be swinging at two balls, no strikes. In the air down the left field line to Jesus running towards foul ground and it will land harmlessly by the pen. One up onto the bullpen mound. That's one of the dangers of having the bullpen on the playing field. Those outfielders have to go at full speed and then run uphill as they get close to that bullpen area. There you can see De Jesus just looking down at his feet to make sure he doesn't trip and fall on it. Chris Capuano stretching beyond the mound there. In the dirt, full count. Split finger fastball this time from Peralta and bouncing it. Zinski does not chase. You got to tip your cap to any catcher that sits back there and tries to block that pitch. You just exactly what you're trying to do is get him to chase it. You know you're not going to catch it cleanly. That's for sure. Zinski fouls it off. We'll do it again. Three and two. AJ Day has singled to left and scored the Red Sox long run. And last time up, came up with runners at first and second and two down, lined out to Logan Forsythe at second base. Zinski with a high chopper left side and tried to pick it was Escobar barehanded as Brzezinski's thinking too and he will get there. Escobar trying the barehanded bid. He'll advise there and it gets into left and standing at second is Brzezinski. Yeah, you, you know, you think he'd go to the glove. I mean, that would be the only chance that we have with this, this kind of spin on the baseball coming off the unofficial surface like that. I mean, that's almost an impossible play to barehand. And I. I really don't know what Escobar was thinking right there. I don't, I don't know if he thought Longoria was going to try to get it. Brzezinski hustling in the second base to pick up the double. Well, we'll see how they score well, that, but it probably double. will be a double. Yep, give him a double. Well, there's just no reason to try to turn that into a do or die play. It's Brzezinski running. One of the slowest guys in baseball. 
and it seemed to me, you know, looking at it, it's almost like Escobar thought that Longoria might cut across and get that, and then he was kind of left with desperation and just trying to barehand it. I, I don't know. But uh, that was a very strange play by Escobar. Now, hopefully the Red Sox can take advantage of that somehow. He's got Przinsky on second base. Boy, just hang back on that, catch it, and throw him out. Grady size more two for two, two doubles. He takes strike one. And we talk a lot about in the game of baseball that a lot of your thought process and all of what you have to do when the ball gets hit to you should be thought of before the ball gets hit to you. Escobar had to know it was Brzezinski running. Up foul off to the left. Well, for every Red Sox game that goes into extra innings, where the Sox get a save, CBS Pharmacy make a donation to Boston Children's Hospital towards a $25,000 donation once again this season. CBS Pharmacy is the official pharmacy of the Boston Red Sox. We've seen Johnny Gomes come out on deck for Jackie Bradley Jr. with bat for him. Two strikes now to Grady Sizemore. Sizemore had double lead off the fifth inning and was left at third base. Red Sox have left five men on to the first six innings. Laid on the cut and he strikes out. Now Peralta painting the outside corner with this fastball and size ball who likes the ball middle in. No contact. That ball very tidy swing that time by size more as that ball quickly gets by him. And that fastball was only a 91. That was good location. It was on the outer half but the way size more swung at that. It made it look like he was trying to reach halfway into the other batter's box in order to hit it. Well, Johnny Gomes with very good numbers against Peralta. So John Farrell having a pinch hit here for Jackie Bradley Jr. Who had been 0 for 2 against Jake Odorizzi today. Strike out and a ground out. Strike one to Johnny Gomes right on the edge. Yeah, very limited bench today, too, for John Farrell. Herrera, the switch hitter, Ross, the right hander, and across Johnny Gomes. Sox leading hitter with runners in scoring position. Trying to get something done here in the seventh inning. Red Sox trailing by two. In the dirt, Molina picks it on the backhand. Got a chance to talk to Gomes today about the continued excitement that he always has when he comes back down here. Of course, it's the organization that gave him his chance to play. He was involved in the beginning of turning this organization around down here, and then so proud of the fact that he's come down here and had some good games and won some big games with the Red Sox against this organization. He was part of the turnaround Joe Madden in 2008 that saw the Rays go to the World Series. Of course, getting by the Red Sox to get there against the Phillies. Swing and a miss. Big swing for Gomes. This time the fastball in tying up Johnny Gomes. Lots of extra movement in that swing by Gomes, so sometimes he will be a little tardy.
In the air to left field for Johnny Gomes. Deep, far, and very gone. Two-run home run to tie the score at three. Well, it's all about location of pitches. You know, the pitch before, they tied up Gomes with a fastball inside. They try to come back with a fastball, but this ball is going to be up and out over the plate, and Gomes loses it to tie the ball game. That's exactly what Farrell was hoping for from Gomes when he pinch hit him. I believe he had four pinch hit home runs last year off the bench for this Red Sox team. Always has a little bit of a flair for the dramatic. That is his fourth home run off Peralta of his career. So Peralta gets him in a spot here, and Gomes takes him out of the yard to tie this game. So Odorizzi no longer part of the decision. It's a tie game here in the seventh inning. Still just one out. Gonna miss for Holt. That is the eighth career pinch hit home run for Johnny Gomes. One of the things that Gomes told me about last year's ball club is he said no one gave anyone credit because they sort of looked like a, a band of misfits and castoffs. And he said every one of these guys on this team had one somewhere, just not all together. He said it was going to be a perfect combination of guys that knew how to play and played hard. And they had a chance for great chemistry and a good year. Tough hop for Loney. He's got it. He'll flip the Peralta for the out as Holt retired. Two down. Let's check in with the Toyota game break and send it to Tom Karen. TC. About that, Josh Beckett. A year ago, he's saying he was done. Yes. <laughs> now he's going to almost look, looks like he might pitch a no hitter today. Well, a happy Johnny Gomes has tied this game with a pinch hit two run home run. Xander Bogarts struck out, fly to right, hit by a pitch. Steve is a guy who's been around the Dodgers the last couple of years. Uh, they weren't getting much out of Josh Beckett until now. Yeah, I mean, he clearly pitched better than the record that he, he showed. But, of course, uh, you know, everyone knows that he left the Red Sox in, in a bad way. But he, he had been a gamer, and he battled through some things. And now it looks like he's healthy again. He may give the Dodgers some quality innings. No guards down 0-2. I think it's amazing to watch how pitchers can reinvent themselves. When you talk about a guy like Josh Beckett, whose fastball used to be 97, and he threw a 91 mile an hour changeup, who now doesn't have either of those pitches in his arsenal and has to kind of reinvent how he gets guys out today, clearly doing it. In the year to left field, down the line for Bogarts on the run to Jesus, won't get there. Xander headed for second base. Throw goes there, but it's late. And a double for Xander Bogarts. Uh, Peralta again tried that uh, that quick pitch delivery to Bogarts, but Bogarts was having none of it. Instead of coming set as he comes into his set position, he just kind of delivers the ball to home plate very quickly. He throws the timing off, or it should throw the timing off of the hitter, but not to Bogarts that time. Ball up and away, hooks it, and gets that double. So the Red Sox have the potential lead run in scoring position. It's strange to have a guy who takes so much time between pitches try to quick pitch you. So Bogarts at second base, two down, picks up his 11th double of the year, and now Pedroia with a chance. With the Red Sox on top here in the seventh. Weston one for three today. Single to left field back in the fourth inning.
In the dirt, gets away from Molina. To third goes Bogart. So round it. That's a little bit surprising to me. As good as Molina is trying to backhand that ball. I mean, that's much one that he normally would block. The runner would be Sylvia at second base instead of third base. This is what he tries to backhand, and it gets by him. That is so unusual for Molina. Bogart's now at third base, and a little bobble by an infielder. Troy is safe at first base. The Red Sox get a run. It's that same split-fingered fastball that we talked about earlier. That's a little tough for Molina to have to handle back there because his entire intention is to throw that in the dirt. But you gotta, you got to get out there and block it if you're a catcher. You can't backhand it. Look out. Troy is ducking back out of the way. Split thing at fastball right here that just did nothing. And Sox have action in their pen. Craig Breslow up and warming. Alex Wilson came in for Brandon Workman. Breslow warms now. 2 0 oh, to count to Dustin Pedroia. in their first strike. Went for 13 in his career against Peralta. 308 average for Dustin. Go ahead run 90 feet away. Boya down the right field line but foul. Tops do it again, two and two. Split thing at fastball again, but it's, it stays high, and that gives Petroyer a chance to at least foul it off. David Ortiz waiting on deck, hoping to get a chance here in the seventh inning. In the air to right field, sending Myers back. He's got room. And he makes the catch that ends the inning. Johnny Gomes with a pinch hit, two run home run. He's tied this game at three.
to the list. Yesterday, Jerry mentioned he liked the booth here at the Trot. Here are the top TV booths for Jerry. Camden Yards in Baltimore. Rogers Center, Safeco Field, and Yankee Stadium. Is that the order, you would say, Jerry? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say the order, but probably the top four for me, I, I think, Don. You have a comment about tonight's list? Tweet us at hashtag Nesson List. I like Philadelphia mixed in there, too. Philadelphia is also good, yes. Well, we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. New pitcher for the Red Sox is Craig Breslow. Third arm of the day used by John Farrell. 16th appearance, 2-0. The 2.87 earned run average. 15 and two-thirds, 13 strikeouts. Does have nine walks. Only sitting at 263 against Craig Breslow. The scoreless seventh inning yesterday at Tampa Bay, like a lot of Red Sox relievers did. Gave up the hit and had two strikeouts. Yesterday marked his 10th straight scoreless outing. That ranges over nine and two-thirds innings pitch since the start of May. And he's really back to where he was a year ago. A lot of fans watching us around New England and around the United States on this Memorial Day weekend. And Phil P. sending this in to us. If you'd like to submit a video. Family enjoying a barbecue on this weekend. Submit it to Jerry at 536-536. Looks like a nice day. Yes, it does. Changes for the Red Sox as Grady Sizemore moves from left to center field. And Johnny Gomes, who had pinch hit for Jackie Bradley Jr., stays in the game in left field. A pinch hitter coming up here for the Rays. Desmond Jennings is going to pinch hit for David DeJesus. With the left hander Craig Breslow in the game. Jesus was one for three with a double and a run scored. Jennings at 238, four homers, 11 runs batted in. For attention, please, defensive changes for Boston. Alex Wilson went an inning. Didn't give up a hit nor a run. He didn't walk, he did walk one and didn't strike anybody out. One of the strengths all season long has been the bullpen of the Red Sox, and this needs to be a shutdown inning for Breslow. You come in and Gomes hits the big two run homer to tie it. You got to throw a goose egg up in this inning to get your, your guys back in the dugout and give them an opportunity to maybe take the lead late in this game. Action for the Rays on the other side, Juan Carlos Oviedo. Of getting the win and the walk off victory here the other night for Tampa Bay. Did he go? They'll check. No, he did not. This is Adrian Johnson. Not a bad pitch either, right there by Breslow. Didn't miss the outside corner by very much. Take a look at the side. Does Jennings go? A little bit called the strike. There's ball four. The last thing you want to do is put Jennings on, and he just did. Well, stay tuned. Today, following WB Mason's X Trainings Live, the Red Sox Final presented by Insurance. Send your questions to TC at hashtag Sox Final. Maybe yours will be answered on Red Sox Final presented by Insurance. Lead off walk for Desmond Jennings. 11 out of 14 in thefts on the year, 79%. Evan Longoria, the batter, is going to get two hits today, including his fifth home run of the year. Back in the fourth inning to lead it off against Brandon Workman with the Red Sox at the time on top one nothing. Longoria taking it the other way.
Swing and a miss. Longoria all geared up there. 0 and 2. Cut fastball that time down and in from uh, Breslow Longoria. Right on top of it. The left center and in for a base hit. Jennings is headed to third base. Gomes will go to second to keep the double play in order. But all of a sudden, it's first and third. Nobody out for the Rays. Let's get a game break in Tom Karen, TC. All right, Tom, thanks very much. So Josh Beckett making history today for the Dodgers. And the pinch hitter coming up here for the Rays from Matt Joyce would be Sean Rodriguez. Yeah, looking down at the Red Sox bullpen, nobody throwing, and that gives Joe Madden the uh, the luxury of sending up Rodriguez without having to worry about a right-hander coming into the game. Walk to Jennings to begin the inning. Longoria singles, first and third, nobody out. Sean Rodriguez trying to put the Rays back on top again. A foul. Jennings doing some dancing down that line at third base. Red Sox now move their middle midfielders back to double play down. See if they come in when Breslow makes his delivery to home plate, or if they stay stationary at two. In the air to deep left field for Rodriguez. Three run home run for Sean Rodriguez off Breslow, and the Sox trail by three just like that. Well, you know, how many times do you see your number three hit with a line get pinch hit for? Almost never. Joyce gets pinch hit for. They had no right hand to throw in the bullpen. They throw Rodriguez to the plate, and Rodriguez takes the ball out of the ballpark. Myers fouls it off. Rodriguez is out of flair for the dramatic on this homestand for the uh, Tampa Bay Rays. It's just not the type of inning you can afford to have this late in the ball game after you tie the game. Too many pitches out over the middle of the plate for Breslow. This one is popped up shallow right and falling fast, but in to make the catch is not into the slide. That is just the first out of the inning. A nice play by Daniel Norris. He had a, a lot of distance to cover before making this catch. Goes into the slide, makes the catch before the ball hits the turf. And then slides with it to show the umpire the baseball and get the out. One down in the inning, bases empty for James Loney. First career pitch hit home run for Sean Rodriguez. Has given the Rays a 6 to 3 advantage here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Only 0 for 3. Six runs for the Rays now as they were a team that came in here over their last 11 games have been averaging less than three runs a game two and a half runs a game and yet they had a winning record during that punt that time. This will drop in in front of Sizemore. Loney contributes with a hit of his own. 
MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 12 years. Join the millions of subscribers, watch every out of market game live in a true HD on over 400 devices. Visit RedSox.com for details. One out, James Loney at first base, and here is Brandon Geyer. His walk singled and grounded out to third base. Takes the strike. Muslow jumps ahead here, 0 and 2. Muslow, that is the first home run that he's given up this season. Had a flair for the dramatic earlier in the homestand for the Rays. 11th inning had a three run walk off home run against the Oakland A's. Now, this is through the left side in the left field of base hit. And then Geyer continues to hit his second hit of the day. They had a big night last night, now on base three times tonight. Today, a walk, a couple of base hits. That time it was on the changeup from Breslow. Out on his front foot a little bit, but still able to keep the hands back and pick up the base hit to left field. So Wandy Evans on the phone, and the Red Sox do have action in the pen. Edward Mujica is up for Boston. The entire Rays team has been pretty dramatic lately. Three straight walk-off victories. That's a franchise record. Unfortunately for the Red Sox on the wrong end of two of those the Oakland A's were here Thursday before the Red Sox arrived the first walk off this is up near the catwalks high in the air Xander Bogarts at short left field will make the catch for the second out in advance for the base runners two down Don I'm pretty sure before you ever did a game down here you figured the the statement out of your mouth would never be there's a fly ball deep and up by the catwalks. Yeah. They always come into play here though. It's unbelievable all this stuff you get up there the speakers the wires everything else. You said it best I think at the pregame show it's kind of like uh, the big top here. <laughs> Keep waiting for the dancing bears. Now Escobar old for two with a walk. And take a pitch outside. Escobar has not had a hit in this series. As the score scans right now, too, his Tampa Bay teammates took Escobar off the, the hook there a little bit. Now is they have a three run lead, but his little gaff there on Kurzinski's double enabled an extra runner to be on before Gomes. Gomes home run tied the game at the time. Could have been a huge play in this game. A liner down the left field line towards the corner. Loney coming around to score. Behind him, Dyer's going to try and score. The throw is going to be close. Not in time. Backed up by Breslow. Two more runs for the Rays, and they lead it 8-3 to three and open it up here in the seventh inning. Escobar's been having a tough series. Uh, not this time. Gets a fastball in, cleans it out, right down that left field line. Two runs come across. Game opened up by the Rays, and John Farrell out to the mound again to make a pitching change. He hoped he would not have to make.
Pitching change from the drop in St. Pete. Mejica coming in. As tough an outing we have ever seen Craig Breslow have. Uh, so far, he's been touched for five runs out of the pen. Edward Mujica and just taking third. Uncontested is Escobar. Just walked to third almost. Now the two infielders spread way out, especially with two outs, and Escobar just walks into third base. There you can see how much room he had, and uh, Pazinski not even making a throw. Well, they're not too happy about it down here in the dugout, and I don't I don't blame them. This is a team that's absolutely getting their noses rubbed in it, and now you're stealing third base, and now we're going to have more words down here. Escobar yelling back into that dugout, and the Red Sox giving it to him. David Ross. Right, here comes done. Johnny Gomes. He's famous for that. Here we go. It's time to fight at the top. Frustration for the Red Sox boiling over here. Well, I can certainly understand this. I mean, you've been getting your butt kicked by this team for three straight games, and Escobar with the five run lead just walks into third base with two outs. Somebody didn't like it from the Red Sox dugout. Escobar wants to challenge the whole dugout, and Gomes came in to take care of business. And Johnny Gomes has no problem doing that and actually a history of doing that. You remember him getting after it with Coco Crisp? I think nice. Gomes is one of those guys that says, hey, you want to start mouthing off? You want to challenge the entire dugout? How about you let me go first? They're not done yet either. They're, not, they're still yapping out there. I know Pazinski wasn't happy about it when he was behind the plate and the runner took off. Looked like he was saying something to Molina. Yeah, he was. And of course, David Ross, the other catcher in here in the dugout next to me, he was John with Escobar. There's Pazinski talking about it. And he said up five. Just bad baseball this late in the game. And yeah, don't talk to me. Don't you talk to me. David Ortiz was down at this end of the dugout. Yeah, and Escobar's pointing to who he wants to go to, and here comes Gomes. 
And all of a sudden, Escobar gets get, he's going backwards. Escobar's pointing, he's pointing, he's pointing, and then he's running backwards. This was a, a classic guy who likes to start a little bit of noise and then doesn't want to finish it. Yeah, he's got, he's got 15 people between him and everybody else. You want to take on the whole dugout, take him on. Let's see what they do here. As Farrell is fired up right now, Larry Van Over came over to talk to him, and Farrell is upset. Well, I'm sure that there was probably some ejections here. I bet yeah. Johnny Gomes is out of the game. Yeah, I'm That's sure right. of that too, Steve. And and maybe a couple more. And John Farrell saying, "You got to be kidding me." And I don't think any of us really condone the violence in a game or something like this that happens. But if you want to start something, then be man enough to finish it. This ought to be interesting watching Gomes come in by uh, Escobar. Yeah, Escobar better make sure he knows where Gomes is at all times. Yeah, get somebody between you. So now Carp is going to have to come in and head to the outfield as the Red Sox will have to shift around what they're doing here defensively with Gomes coming out of this game. Looks like Johnny Herrera is going to go over to first base. Here comes Gomes again. Escobar doesn't have the courage to look at Gomes on his way by. Looks like they're taking Escobar out of the game as well. I was going to well. say, why is Gomes the only one out? Escobar is going too. Yeah, he thought it was yapping, doing all the yapping for third base and got it started. Better be careful walking by Pierzynski too. He's had his fair share of tussles over the years. And John Farrell's back out again to talk to Larry Van Over, the crew chief. Now Escobar right here wants to take on the whole Red Sox bench as he makes his way toward the bench. Now he's got to sidestep the coach and go back and point at everybody. Come on out, out. Come on, come on, come on. And then somebody to decide to come in, and where does he go? He goes backwards. Molina trying to keep Gomes out of the way. Angel Hernandez in the way of Gomes getting any further in. Yeah, really the two guys in the whole scuffle that probably did a good job of making sure that it didn't get completely out of hand was Angel Hernandez and also Tom Foley the third base coach he tried to keep Escobar from being a jerk and Cole Figueroa running at third base of course he had the big walk-off hit on Friday night he now pinch runs my car moves from first base to left field Jonathan Herrera into the game at first base After all of this, the count is 0-1 to Molina, who will take a pitch outside. Our two outs in the inning. I believe warnings were handed out. I would have to think so after that, Don. Home plate umpire Angel Hernandez pointed to both dugouts. 1-1 is outside. You know, what, what's troublesome is, is five runs by no means is a guaranteed win. But the way this whole thing has broke down over the last couple of days, that is rubbing it in your face. And especially with two outs, when you're already in scoring position, you know, to take off to go to third base. And that's what upset the Red Sox dugout so much. And five runs this late in a game against a Red Sox team that hasn't been able to score is too much. The shortstop pick by Bogart should go to first, and that will end. Uh, a very interesting inning, but a very productive one for the Rays. They score five times, take an 8-3 lead.
And now as we head to the top half of the eighth inning. Changes for the Rays now as Jesmyn Jennings stays in the game and takes over in center field. Brandon Geyer who had been in center now takes over in left where he started yesterday. Moving from second to shortstop is Logan Forsythe. And staying in the game is Cole Figueroa who ran for Escobar who's ejected from this game. New pitcher for the Rays on Carlos Oviedo. 15th appearance of the year. Want to know that win came here the other night on Friday. 1.72 earned run average, 15 and two thirds innings, 15 strikeouts to six walks. An opponent's hitting at 175 against Oviedo. It'll be David Ortiz who leads it off here for the Red Sox in the eighth. This rivalry with the Rays. Always very interesting and it continues to be so. Into the shift go the Rays on the right side against Big Poppy. Off the hook is Terrell Peralta. He gave up two runs on the two run home run. The pinch hit two run home run for Johnny Gomes. Walk anybody struck out a batter. Told now that Sean Rodriguez was also ejected. He is the designated hitter right now, so an announcement to him doesn't have to be made till his position comes up in the batting order. I did not see what he did. No, I didn't either. Steve, did you see anything that uh, Sean Rodriguez did from your vantage point? I had a really good view of what happened between Gomes and Escobar, but I think Rodriguez was kind of behind the pile. Uh, from my vantage point down here. And I talked really all homestand when the Red Sox really got blistered at home by both Detroit and then the Blue Jays with all the home runs that the Blue Jays were hitting. Well, two strikes out for the first out of the eighth inning. And how comfortable they were at the plate. I was a little surprised that some of the Red Sox pitchers didn't make someone dance around in the box a little more often and then certainly come down to this game and this whole series and get it taken to you. Finally a little life at the end there. One down here in the eighth inning Mike Carp the batter. Let's move from first base to left field in this game. To the left. Let's take a closer look at tomorrow's starting pitchers. Clay Buckholz, nine starts, two and four with a 6.32 earned run average. Urban Santana going tomorrow for the Atlanta Braves, eight starts, four and two with a 3.42 earned run average. Closer look brought to you by FW Web. For an even closer look, visit fwweb.com. Center field. Jennings coming from center. And he'll put it away for out number two of the eighth. Well, don't miss Red Sox first pitch presented by Men's Warehouse. TC and Jim Rice to preview the Sox Braves series and talk Clay Buckholz looking to bounce back. That's tomorrow at noon on Nesson. The Red Sox playing back to back day games in two different cities. St. Petersburg today to take on the Rays, Atlanta tomorrow to take on the Braves. Daniel Nava 0 for 3 in his first start since returning from Pawtucket.
to left center field. Jennings on the move. He will get there. A 1 2 3 8th inning for Oviedo. We head to the bottom of the 8th. 8 3 Tampa Bay. Subaru dealers of New England. Ryan's coffee pouches. The new Scion TC. And by Southwest Airlines. Last half of the eighth inning back at Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, Florida. Eight to three. The Rays have the lead over the Red Sox. And a first pitch strike in there. Give me Hika back on the mound again. Desmond Jennings leading it off here in the eighth as he did in the seventh. Pinch hitting and we're in the walk. They got the five run inning started for the Rays. Line for Craig Breslow today. Two thirds of an inning, five hits, five runs. He walked one, didn't strike anybody out, and it's on the hook right now for the Red Sox. Josh Lukey up in the pen for Tampa Bay. Foul and it's still one and two. Well, did you miss the all-new episode of Ness and Clubhouse? Check it out after our post-game coverage today. You'll find out what causes a bat to break. Learn how to be a Fenway PA announcer. Plus, Gary and David Ortiz's son D'Angelo face off in a fun new competition tonight following post-game coverage. Fouled off to the right, still one and two to Jennings. I think we knew as we've been watching the bullpen work for the Red Sox and they've continued to have great outings that sooner or later that was going to catch up with them. There's a couple of guys in that bullpen that have thrown four out of the last five days that are unavailable. And Mojica back out there. Jennings did not have the outing or Breslow I'm sorry did not have the outing they were looking for. And Jennings strikes out here for the first out of the eighth inning. You can only go to the well so many times before that bullpen starts to get taxed. And I, I really think that in this game they were hoping to get a couple of innings out of Breslow. I don't think that he wanted to go to anybody else Absolutely. in this game out of the bullpen. 
But uh, Breslow did not have it in this game, and uh, that's why we get an 8-3 to three ball game right now. So it is now Mahika's game here, one out in the eighth, and Evan Longoria the batter. Longoria with a three hit game, his second three hit game of this series. Had one on Friday night, too. And he homered back in the fourth inning, picking up his fifth home run of the season. And Hannigan has come out on deck. That in that DH spot to uh, Sean Rodriguez. Not be part of because he was ejected from this game. In the air to shallow right, Nava coming in. Two down in the eighth. Ryan Hannigan. Having a conversation, the two catchers, Brzezinski and Hannigan, about Escobar, no doubt, and why anybody would be stealing third base in that situation. I get the impression watching AJ Brzezinski over the years that he talks quite a bit, I think. Steve, do you get that sense? 24 7. <laughs> <laughs> Was the old line that Ozzie Gian had about Perczynski? Is that <laughs> was a little harsh, but he said everyone hates Perczynski. We just hate him less because he plays with us. <laughs> He's the kind of guy that can get under your skin a little bit as an opposing player, but everywhere he's gone, the success he's had as a teammate has been different. They like having him around if he's wearing your uniform. In there for strike two, one and two. I think sometimes when you get wrapped up in the, your own team that you pay most attention to, you forget about what other ball clubs are going through. And again, skies this to left. Harp has it sized up. And puts it away. It's a one, two, three, eighth inning from Mahika. Red Sox coming up, trailing by five. Tampa Bay with an 8-3 lead. It's time now for our game summary. It's brought to you by Xfinity. Brendan Workman worked five innings in his return to the major leagues here with the Red Sox. The Red Sox are trailing 3-1 when Johnny Gomes hit a pinch hit two-run home run to tie the game 3-3, but the Rays open it up. 
as they score five times in their half of the seventh inning. And Rizzi ends up going six innings, and he gave up one earned run as the Red Sox. Right now, five runs down as they come to bat in the ninth inning, and they'll do it against a new pitcher for the Rays, Josh Lukey, into the game here. His 23rd appearance, one and two, with a 4.73 earned run average, and it's hitting at 284 against Lukey. AJ Pierzynski leading it off and driving one towards the gap in right center field, and this one will one hop the wall. Brzezinski heads for second base. He's got himself his third hit of the day, second double. Got back to back doubles in the seventh inning, now in the ninth inning to get things started for the Red Sox. Gets a fastball first pitch down and hooks that ball in the uh, right center field gap for the uh, two base hit. So a three for four afternoon for Brzezinski. Smart hitting by AJ, figuring that. A relief pitcher in this situation, five run lead. He's going to come in throwing strikes. He kind of ambushed that first pitch. No Grady Sizemore standing in with Brzezinski at second base. And he takes strike one. Plus, you know, you're not going to get drilled either because they've given warning to both sides. <laughs> that makes you a little bit more comfortable in the box. <laughs> yeah, it does. Nothing up and in. Sizemore pops it up. Shallow left. Geyer in. Forsyth out. And it'll be Geyer makes the catch. Called off Forsyth for the first out of the night. Well, tune in tonight at 10 p.m. for Nesson Sports Today, presented by People's United Bank. Gary and Leah. We'll have part three of the Pats OTA preview and look ahead to the Brave series coming up. It begins tomorrow. See what know how can do. Third, second one down. Here is Jonathan Herrera batting for the first time. After Gomes was ejected, Cart moved from first base to left field, and Herrera took over at first base. Strike ball. Sox to bring their traveling party to Atlanta for two games. What is the mindset right now of the Red Sox, Terry? After all this going on, well, it's you know it's been the same for about three or four days, and it's it's just discouraging. I mean, you, you you're trying everything you possibly can. It's not like they're not out there hustling or trying. It's just not happening. Nothing's happening right. You know, you, you go through slumps like this, and it's a combination of all things: pitching, hitting. Defense, it all seems to add up at one time, and that's how you end up in these streaks. Steve, this is a team that never had to endure this last year at any point. They've all endured it as players, though, certainly not last year. It was a dream season, a World Series year. This is the type of thing that potentially can bring them together a little bit closer. And Herrera strikes out, Red Sox down to their last out. And you don't get to see the benefit of it right now in this game, but. Take a look at this strike three to Herrera. I mean, these guys will all have a chance to talk about this on the flight into Atlanta. They're, I'm sure that everybody on the bench is talking about it right now, but sometimes these things bring guys closer together, and it's the catalyst for them to say, let's go. Time to turn this thing around. Well, the problem that they do have is that they are not healthy. And that's a major problem. They're no Victorino, they're no Napoli, it's a big party of lineup. Brock Holt takes ball one. And the injuries have mounted as this losing streak has mounted. You're exactly right. So it makes it that much more difficult to get any kind of run going at all. And I think you can be as gung ho as you want to be, but if you don't have the horses. One oh two Brock Holt. On the ground and through into right field a base hit. Brzezinski will be stopped at third as Myers gets it back in, and it is first and third now with two down. Holt with his first hit of the day. This is a smart move right there by Brian Butterfield, the third base coach of the Red Sox. I think that 
they were pretty much conceding that run. I don't think Myers didn't even want to throw it in. There's absolutely no reason to get thrown out of the plate in this situation. You need a huge comeback here. And getting thrown out the plate right here isn't going to help that. First and third, two down. Xander Bogart's the batter. Doubled his last time up, one for three day. Goes as defensive indifference taking second is Brock Holt. Well, in case things get interesting, Grant Balfour is up in the pen for the Rays. Our closer. Sometimes things can get interesting even after he comes in the game. <laughs> yes. And the rage begins. 1 0. Into center field, a base hit for Bogarts. From third comes Krasinski. Brock Holt coming around. And two runs in for Boston. It is now 8 to 5. Xander Bogarts with his second hit drives in a pair. And that's the way he was swinging the bat the last couple of games at home. I mean, just right on everything, you know, hard line drives. Even his outs were hard, were hard hit. This line shot right up over the head of Lukey. In the center field, drives in two, picks up his 10th uh, and 11th RBIs of the season. Bogart's making a little bit of an adjustment as to what you were talking about earlier, Jerry, that they tried to go away, away, away. That one didn't quite get out there far enough, and he shot it right back up the middle. And all you need now is one more guy to get on base, bring Big Poppy up there. Well, Joe Madden headed out. Balfour warming in the pen. The pitching change from St. Pete, eight to five Rays. Game. We'll break down Brandon Workman's outing, John Farrell's post game comments. Can't go wrong when you buy right at WB Mason. This becomes a safe situation with a tying run on deck, and Tampa Bay has a three run lead. Xander Bogarts drives in two to get the Red Sox within three. Those are for the Rays. Grant Balfour into the game. His 20th appearance, 0 1, 5.59 earned run average. He blew his second save here on Thursday against Oakland. Joya taking strike one.
Gray with a single in the fourth inning, one for four in this game. After Balfour blew that save, the fans here were booing him, and he complained about it. Jumps ahead, 0-2. Well, right now they're cheering for the final strike in this ball game. Belfort's screaming at himself. He's hoping to get a chance to get a potential trying run if he can get up there. Taking second base is Bogarts on a pitch in the dirt, two and two. Defensive indifference again. Two two pitch. Pedroia grounds to third. Longoria backs up. His throw is good. And this losing streak for the Red Sox is now ten games. Three straight series they have been swept. Tigers, Jays, and now Rays. And they will head to Atlanta, losing this one eight to five. We sent it to Tom Karen, 8-5 the final. Tom?